Good morning. Hold on a second. Pull up some things. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Can you hear me? Total solar eclipse news conference. Ooh, that's exciting. Good Lord. Good Lord. All right. Wait for some uh, people to just watched a very interesting documentary. Hold on. Um, anyway, I guess I'll just sit here and talk to myself. Hey, Tony, how you doing, girl? How you doing? How you doing? I got some nothing crazy to talk about today. Good morning, Mercedes girl, Cheyenne, Red Dragon, Marcy in the house. Um, I just uh, listened to a very interesting documentary about Diddy. You guys know Diddy, Puff Daddy. Um, hey, prayers to all the people on the Key Bridge. Oh, I just heard about that. That's fucking terrible. There was people on it when it collapsed. Hold on. Oh, my God. Dude, I since I've been a little kid, I have... I have had a fear of bridges, like, since I was a kid. I remember, well, you know, I have to cross bridges a lot because I live on an island. So when we would go to, like, upstate, you know, I, I we would have to, you know, go over the Throg's Neck Bridge. And I just remember it was, like, so scary. I don't know. And I was terrified of the bridges. Like, I used to get into, like, a panic when we went over the bridges. I still don't like them. I still get nervous over bridges. That's, like, one of my biggest fears is, like, being on a bridge and it collapsing. Um, oh, my God. That's just terrible. Key bridge. Let me look that up. Hold on a second. I mean, that's so scary. How the fuck? Somebody said a cruise ship hit it or something? Or a ship of some sort. Sorry, not a cruise ship. I don't know why I said that. Key bridge. Hold on. Collapse. So, yeah. Is my phone working or am I hearing things? I'm hearing things. Um, I just watched this really interesting documentary on uh, on Diddy. P. Diddy. He's in big trouble. <laughs> He's in trouble right now. Oh, shit. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I was struck by a ship. Hold on a second. Oh, my God. <gasps> Oh my god. You know, it's funny, when we were just recently going over the Verrazano Bridge, there was a huge container ship, dude. I don't know if that, you know, a lot of you guys don't live, like, near the coast. Um, I know you do life rewinded. I know probably Tony does, too. Oh my god, Tony, when, when you're stuck in traffic on the bridge, oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Um, there was this huge, huge, huge cargo ship going under the Verrazano Bridge, and it was going pretty fast. And I'm like, dude, that thing looks like it's going to hit. I mean, the Verrazano Bridge is huge. I don't know if, you know, many of you guys have ever seen that. But that shit's huge. It's fucking enormous. It's one of the longest bridges. I know it's the longest bridge in New York. It might be one of the longest bridges on the, like, in the Northeast. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's tall, too. It's a very tall bridge. And um, that's where they come in. You know, all the ships come in to port to go into, like, the city. And... Oh my god, it was so scary. Oh, so scary. Whew, it was it was like it looked like it was gonna hit. In reality, it was probably about like, I don't know, you know, twenty feet away, but it just the angle we were at, because we were right about to like turn the corner to get on the bridge. And uh holy shit, look at this. What the fuck? Hold on. Further information about uh, what was the, what what happened during that time. Oh my God! I'm gonna rewind this. Ugh, I'm on Fox News of all places. Hold on, let me rewind a little bit. See what's going on here. Oh my God, dude! How many people were on the bridge? Uh, oh essentially God. destroyed, and we know that bridge built back in the 70s took about oh. five. 
All right, let me rewind. Holy shit, look at, that's what was going under the Verrazano. You see all those containers? That thing is like a couple of stories high. How the fuck did the boat Into the hit water it, in just a matter of seconds. That's something that was captured on video. Oh, it has been shown my God. all over social media, shared all over the place pretty much, as folks were trying to figure out exactly what happened. If you were watching earlier, we had Fox 5 DC's Melanie Aldwick, and she said at first when she saw the video, Holy she thought shit. maybe it was artificial intelligence or something of that nature and uh, wanted comfort. That's really sad that we have to worry if, if something like this is artificial intelligence. They lost power and steering. Oh, my God. Never go on the top level, always bottom. We always go on the top information before ever sharing it on our social media. That was kind of the thoughts that were shared by so many people as they watched that unbelievable video. Why are you saying that, Tony? Now, Brandon Scott, who is the mayor of Baltimore, saying, quote, never would you think that you would see physically see the key bridge tumble down like that. Holy shit. Where is this bridge? I'm not familiar with it. It looked like something out of an action movie. It is an unthinkable oh, tragedy. Oh, Fire oh Chief Baltimore. James Wait a second. Wait a second. Have I gone over this bridge? I want to look on a map and see where this is. Hold on a second. We just... The key bridge. Hold on. What road is it on? Oh, my God, dude. What? what wow. That is scary. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, wait a second. I've been on this bridge. I think. It sounds very familiar. Route 695 Baltimore. Oh my god. Hold on. I'm just looking at a map to see exactly where that is. Whoa, dude. I, that sounds very familiar. Francis Scott Key Bridge. Hold on. That goes, that connects, let's see. I'll show you guys. Dude, that's a big bridge, holy shit. So we're in, all right, hold on a second. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Where are we? Oh, all right, it's on the East Coast. No, that wouldn't be 695. I feel like I've been on that bridge before for some reason. Huh, I very well might have been because sometimes when you're traveling, Driving through here is a pain in the ass. When you're going down south, it'll send you. I gotta ask my husband. Yeah, dude. Because look, I've definitely been on that bridge before going down south. Because, hold on a second. I gotta ask my husband. That I'm like, wait a second. That sounds very familiar. Because going down, you know, from Long Island, you would, uh, you know, well, it depends on which way you're leaving. You'd go on the Verzano down here through Staten Island, right? Or, right, that's how you would, yeah. Well, you'd go, you'd go also, oh, it's so weird because sometimes it sends you up this way. So you go 495, that's the Long Island Expressway, and you go out uh, over one of these, well, probably these bridges, right? No, sorry, this would be, going upstate so you'd probably drive a little further go over no that goes into manhattan i'm getting confused yeah you'd go over one of these bridges no you go over the george washington bridge this way and then it sends you all through the bronx and then out and then you come back around the whole city it's crazy um so you have to go like over the city like this and then you cross over is that the george washington bridge i don't even know yeah i think so the George Washington Bridge. So you go up this way, 87, over the George Washington Bridge, and then you would end up on the Jersey Turnpike, right? Right here, 95. You would take that all the way down. If you're going down on the East Coast, let's see, 95, 95. And then it depends on where you're going. It's going to split off over here in Jersey. So you could take the Garden State Parkway. That's what you would take down to Atlantic City. Or you continue on 95 where does that bring you hold on a second yeah brings you down by philly and then newark i don't know man that's i've definitely yeah you probably would take this at some point the francis oh sorry right here down and maybe cross over that depending on because there's always traffic in this area dude 
right, you know, by Washington and Maryland uh, near Baltimore. It's fucking I-95 is hell down over in this area. So sometimes it'll send you to get you off of I-95 because you don't want to go around this area. This is <laughs> not fun. So I got to ask my husband. That's fucking crazy, dude. That's a major bridge, like, on a major, you know, highway. Holy shit. Six ninety five. So you take the bridge, or you go toward toast and the tasty around Baltimore, right? Cause right, they mostly take you around the city. I'm like, I might have taken that on the way back up from from going down south. I feel like I crossed it going the other way when last time I was down south. I feel like we crossed that going the other way. You know, going back up towards New York for some reason. That's fucking crazy, dude. Holy shit. Wow. Let me see that again. I can't believe that. The whole fucking thing is gone, man. Holy shit. What time did this happen? Wow. That's so fucked up, dude. Okay. For some reason it's not. saying authorities, oh. quote, may be looking for upwards of seven people, but said the number could change and other officials wouldn't give any figure. Would they so just say? not clear if the. Oh my God. They're going to have to get all those boats out. Oh my God. Now, Brandon Scott, who is the mayor of Baltimore, saying, quote, never would you think that you would assholes. see, physically see the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. Yeah. It is an unthinkable tragedy. Fire Chief James Wallace saying authorities, quote, may be looking for upwards of seven people, but seven. said the number could change and other officials wouldn't give any figures. I wonder what time this happened. Oh, 4 a.m.? All right, so, I mean... They said seven people. I'm hoping there wasn't many cars on the road. Oh, my God. I-95 is a fucking nightmare. Um, oh, my God. This is so terrible. Holy shit, dude. What are these things? I guess, like, buoys or something? These white things in the in the water. Look how small. This just goes to show how big these, these boats are. I mean, obviously, you can see in comparison to the bridge. But look at all the smaller... Um, like, little police boats around uh, and ships. I mean, the size of this ship right here, this little boat is big. But, like, look at these little ones. These little boats. I mean, this thing's massive, dude. Fucking massive. Holy shit, dude. I guess it hit the column. It looks like right where it hit, there would be another column like this right there. You know what I'm saying? Because there's one here. And then, like, this is the center of the bridge, obviously, because you can see the columns are a little a little bigger right there. Could you imagine fucking being on that thing and it just crumbled? You would think these these um, bridges are, are t like, they could withstand something like this. This is fucking crazy. I mean, this is going to be a huge project and a very big bad inconvenience for people traveling in that area. Holy shit, man. I can't fucking believe this. Lanes on the bridge were closed right before. Maybe they were doing some some work, yeah. I mean, they do work usually at night. Good morning. I thought, oh my God, you gotta drive three hours, girl? Be careful. Holy shit, dude. I, I'm like in just shock right here. Like, I mean, you just never see anything like this. This is, uh... Holy shit. I mean, you've seen bridge collapses before, but this is like a major bridge, dude. This is a... I mean, this is crazy. Holy shit. I just remember the name, Francis Scott Key Bridge, because every time we go over bridges when we're driving, I'm like... <gasps> like, I can't breathe, because I hate them. There was crew... A work crew. Yeah, usually at night. The fire department were on scene at 145. There is a press conference starting that. Okay. So, not a fan of going over bridges. Nah, me neither. I mean, you have to when you're driving, you know? Oh, yeah, whatever the client wants. JP's going to service her clients. So I heard. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is fucked up. I hope they find the, the people. Oh, my God. Could you just imagine... You're just driving across the bridge and all of a sudden... I go, look at the fucking weirdos in this chat. Like, there's just so many fucking weird people. What the fuck is going on over here? Putting binder at uh, Biden. 
yeah, you said it. A lot of mentally ill people in chat, especially those that actually read this chat. So sad. People making fun of this tragedy in Baltimore. Get a life. Go outdoors and get some fresh air and sunlight. Yeah. It was not clear if the two rescued. Like, what sick fuck is like, I'm going to go troll a chat, you know, from Fox News covering a tragedy. Speaking of tragedies, this is so fucked up. Speaking of tragedies, so last night... I, I had seen this kid's face in my, you know, like, feed over the last couple weeks. Um, Sebastian Rogers, is it? So, a video came up last night. It was an interview with the parent. So, I was like, oh, I just clicked on it, right? And I was like, I want to learn more about this story. I didn't know. So, I go type the kid's name in to YouTube. Hold on a second. Right? Look at this. Hold on. Let me share this with you guys. I don't know if it's going to show up the same on here as it as it showed up on my phone. They have news about this. I watched this whole entire interview. Fucking bizarre. I'm not... You guys know me. I'm not, like, really into accusing the parents, but this is a very odd interview, to say the least. Uh, the mom and the stepdad, I don't know, man. It's just something was weird. You know, they're just, like, talking to Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace is being Nancy Grace. You know, her rude self. I can't stand her. But, um, she's, like, they're, like, uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like, the whole interview. It was just, I don't know. It's very weird. But then again, you know, she even commented, I can't stand Nancy Grace, but, you know, I, I have to agree with her sometimes where, you know, she was saying this isn't about judging people and their shit and, She's like, you know, I, I want to find facts. She was asking a lot of questions, and she asked a lot of good questions. I have to give her that, you know. I can't stand her personality, but I watched it because I was interested to know what happened, you know. She was asking a lot of good questions, but um, ugh, look at her face. I, I just can't stand this woman. But anyway, right, as I start scrolling down after I watch this, look, JLR. Right? Then I scroll down a little further. I know Betty's there. That's what made me find this. Sorry. That's what made me find this. That's right. I watched somebody who clipped Betty because she's down there right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I start scrolling down and up. Oh, uh, look who else is there. Look who else is there. I mean, all, you know what? I'm, I'm done with the word tragedy pimps. The new word is tragedy vultures. Because that's what they are. They're fucking vultures, these people. This fucking asshole, Dolly Vision, uh, who else? Fucking JLR, uh, Betty Bullhorn, which her videos don't even come up, funny enough. I, I seen a clip that somebody clipped of her, but she's not even in the fucking algorithm for this shit if she's down there. Um, fucking vultures. And you know what? There was a couple of other names in here, and I got to... I hate to say this, but I like I can't stand that channel, the behavior panel. I know a lot of people like it. Is it the behavior panel? Yeah. Is that the one where they have like five people like commenting on like body language? It's so stupid. I don't know. Oh, look who else is there. Look who else. <laughs> Jennifer Koffendoffer. Because this bitch is everywhere too. I can't fucking stand these people. I can't stand these people. So... I, I was like, it's already, tur it's turning into a shit show. Now, the boy's been missing for over a month at this point in time. I don't know what happened. This is a very weird story. Uh, he's an autistic young man. Um, and, and he just, according to the mom, he just walked out of the house in the middle of the night with no shoes on. Which is like not, people know, I just gotta say something. I know this to be true about autistic people. And I don't have any in my family, but I know this to be true about Autistic children, especially, they are known for being creatures of habit. Okay, if there's the slightest break in an autistic kid's, you know, routine, that it could set them off. You know, you know what I'm saying? It could set them off on like a, a tailspin. You're gonna tell me that this aut autistic boy who's so used to routines just walked out of the fucking house at night. The scariest time for an autistic kid to walk out of a house and try to go somewhere by himself. Now, they do escape. There was a commentary by an expert saying that they do sometimes, if they're in a bad situation, they will run away. So, I mean, but I don't know, man. I don't know. 
It's just very odd. You know, it's, it's odd. I mean, in a month they haven't found any, any answers. It's very strange. Hmm. The stepdad, something's off about that dude. And something's off about the mom. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the mom did anything. But when Nancy Grace got to the questioning line uh, where she was asking the dad, it was right towards... Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. It was right towards the, the end, right before... They had other people just all of a sudden pop up on panel. It was kind of fucking weird. Unless I accidentally skipped ahead. She didn't even introduce the people. All of a sudden there was just like other people on. Much respect. Oh, I want to play this part. I think I actually bookmarked it in the comments. I did. The VP Hold on. of the Cajun Navy. All right. I'm going to go. Cajun Navy is a, a rescue group. They ask. She starts asking the dad where he is. And they don't want to disclose their location. They say for their safety. And I get it. But... It's very weird. It's Sebastian. She starts asking him if he ever came back because he's away at work, supposedly. Far. In, uh, I think she said, where is he? Uh, Tallahassee or something like that? No, we, I don't know. I got confused because I think the dad was also away. I wish I knew where he was, to be honest. I... Your theory. Your theory. I think it's possible that someone has my son. Hold on a second. Why? Because I feel like if he had been close to the house, I mean, did or he had look... walked off, that we would found him by okay. now with as many people as we had searching. I wish I could find the part where there she's asking him if he ever came back home. Hold on, it might be a little before this. I've got a question about the belt incident. You're telling oh, me that right. was the only. He hit him with a belt, which is very odd. Statement that Miss Proudfoot made yeah. earlier that canine dogs all right i don't want to know about the canine dogs all over the country i don't know it got a little weird when she started questioning him about whether he has returned home he uh, wouldn't any give point. any exact answers time that they've called come to the house uh, anything all right hold on maybe that was it there is no foul play, no nefarious issues. We've been cleared um, of all wrongdoing. We are working extremely cooperative with all law enforcement agencies uh, at any point in time that they've called, come to the house, uh, anything. Was Sebastian angry or upset? Hold on. I'm going to get struck for playing Nancy Grace, right? To police, both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we have. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. His phone has been thoroughly checked. Yes, ma'am. Have you handed your phones to police, both of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we have. It's weird because they're not out there. Of your they're not out there searching. The dad is, the bio dad, but, but they, these two aren't. And they're in a trailer somewhere. I want to follow up again on the dogs hitting. Earlier, Miss Proudfoot had st All right. I don't know where that part is. So he was just, he got very weird. Um, How old is he? I believe there's there's things all over. I'm not exactly sure. I think he's about 14. Is he 13 or 14 around there? So he's like a young teen. I don't know, man. Something's just weird. But And I can tell everybody. Hold on. I want this guy. I, this guy made a very good statement last night. With 100% certainty, they are on top of it. They are not. He's talking about the police being on top of investigation and the TBI. And their foot off the gas at all on the search for Sebastian or trying to find out. Uh, oh, he's 13? He's 15, yeah. What happened to him? The, the YouTubers and TikTokers that do live stream probably do the most mm -hmm. harm. We appreciate the attention that they bring to things, but when, they, when you do a live stream, you don't have wow. any control over what gets wow. seen by potentially the entire world. Um, so, yes. So we would, you know, we can't tell people what not to do. Uh, they have free speech. It's their own accounts they're using. Not helpful to do live streams during searches like that. If you want to do it, do a video that you can potentially edit later um, so that we cut down on the amount of misinformation.
Whoa, what was that? What was that? Do a video that you could potentially edit later. Why the fuck are people live streaming from a search? This is a guy who's affiliated with the search party that, that was called in to help for look for this kid. Um, that's why social media is not necessarily a house. We, we go in and do search and rescue. Um, you have to trust the process uh, like we do. We trust law enforcement is going to have this wrapped up uh, probably very soon. Brian, yeah, however, I, I want to make sure that you are not encouraging citizen sleuths to stop looking. Because I've had many, many yeah. cases where we put out the warning and they actually spot a missing person. I mean, I only have to point to Gabby Petito, whose remains were found in dispersed camping way out west by a citizen who had heard about the case. So, you know, yeah. Okay, the Bethunes weren't citizen sleuths. They didn't go out specifically searching for Gabby Petito. They were already filming their uh, their vlog because they had a travel vlog with their, you know, camper and everything. I guess they were van life vloggers themselves, right? And they just happened to be going through their footage and they happened to be in the area where Gabby was last seen and they happened to notice the van while they were editing the footage. So that's totally different than what this guy is talking about. He's not saying, you know, he's not saying, oh, don't, you know, that they don't want help from the public. He's just saying maybe you shouldn't be live streaming during a search. You know what I'm saying? Because misinformation goes out because what happens is people are finding things or whatever, and then it's not verified by the police and the information's going out live and, and the rumors are getting started. Just like last night when I was watching this whole Diddy thing, everybody's fucking hitting the live button. Guess what? They don't know why the feds raided Diddy's, Diddy's house. They have no fucking idea. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but they don't know why, why his house got raided right now. They have no idea. As of six hours ago, when I watched the news uh, cast, they don't know. But people are like sex trafficking and all this speculation, and they really don't know why. There's been no confirmation as to why the feds were at his house. Yeah, sometimes their information is wrong, but there is no way in H E W -L, L that I would ask them to stop. And I, I, I know that's we're not, not where no, you're headed. Yeah. No, no, we don't want them to stop. Uh, matter of fact, it was two citizen sleuths that found Riley Strain's bank card uh, out by the, the bank. Right, but they were doing so respectfully. The Cumberland River That's in right. Nashville. So, like I said, they do provide a service. My only thought, suggestion was maybe not doing live stream, maybe just video, and then you can edit and mm -hmm. post later. Just a suggestion. Good suggestion. That's a great suggestion. These people are fucking sick. It shouldn't be for you. Yeah, I agree. It shouldn't be for YouTube for YouTubers to make money on Sebastian's search. That's a, that's what these people are doing there, dude. I'm sorry. There's no part of me that believes that Buddy Bullhorn, whatever the fuck her name is, JLR, uh, Dolly Vision, that they really want to go down there and just help. I just want to help. There's enough people down there. You know, there's enough volunteers. If you want to go down there and help, I got no problem with that. Go down there and help. Go help search. But... When you're live streaming from a search for a little boy, I know exactly, I, look, dude, I do live streams. I know, you're not gonna fucking fool the fool over here. Like, I know that when you're live streaming, it's like talking on the phone or doing anything else. You're distracted. You're more concerned about entertaining your audience and talking to your audience and, you know, answering questions than you are about actually doing other things. You know, it's very hard to do for, for people to multitask and do more than one thing at a time. You know, I, I just don't see how you could be out there live streaming and searching at the same time. You know, it's it just doesn't make any sense to me. So if you're out there live streaming, then you're not searching because you can't do both. You know, you can't be doing both. So if you're out there live streaming, you're just doing it for fucking attention. You know, you're doing it either because you want to make money or because you're out there and you're like, you know, hey, look at me. I'm helping people. I'm a searcher, I'm volunteering my time, you know, I'm a hero. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to project an image and, and make yourself look like you're fucking great. And I'm sorry, I think I'm one of those people where I'm going to sit back and let law enforcement do, it, do their job. If I were ever to volunteer for a search, which I, you know, thank God there hasn't been many, you know, missing people on Long Island. But if, you know, where that's had to happen, the last one I could even think of was this girl, Sarah. Um, oh, my God, I can't remember her name. That was such a sad story. 
I have her face in my head. I just can't remember her last name. But regardless, she was out from in Mastic and she went missing and it ended up this guy. Ugh, nasty, scary looking asshole got her. Um, but the family, you know, there was search parties out east and everything. It was, you know, it was scary. But I mean, if I were ever to join a search, there's no way I would ever fucking take my phone with me and, and like live stream it. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I would go there because I would really want to help, you know, find the person. So, what if crucial, right, exactly, what if crucial evidence was found or a body, right? Are you going to film that? You're going to film a body? Uh, look what happened to Logan Paul when he went to that forest in Japan. There's this forest in Japan, I think it is, right? Known as the suicide forest, basically. You know, people go there and they take their own lives and, and he's, he's live stream, well, he's, I don't know if he was live, no, I don't know if he was live streaming. I think he was just videoing, but he didn't even bother to edit it out the video. Um, but he ends up walking upon a, a person who took their life. And I mean, the internet was fucking outraged because they filmed it and they were talking about it and it was very disrespectful. So, um, yeah, they hope they film a body. They hope they get that moment where they find somebody I don't know. I just think it's very odd. I have to question you if you're walking around with a camera filming something. It's different if the police are doing it because they're using that, you know, for potential evidence and to cover their asses because that's going to, you know, help them in a trial. But for, you know, just regular citizens to be going down there and live streaming while they're fucking searching, I'm sorry, that's fucking weird. So I give props to this guy for, you know, getting on this program and saying this last night, you know, just saying like, hey, I like he's not not saying don't help he's saying maybe do it in a format where you can edit things out later this guy is part of a search group he knows what what goes down you know i saw a clip last night where betty's like oh well i'll play the clip real quick let me see if i can find it again she's uh you know doing her usual fucking complaining about everything because she's just a piece of shit sorry i can't stand these people i i really can't stand these people like i i think it's disgusting this fucking asshole too JLR, you know, scam alert live. Sebastian Robbins, uh, Sebastian Rogers, United Cajun Navy scam search. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, you stupid douche? Ugh, I can't stand this shit. Sorry, I just get so angry because I, I think it's disgusting the way they, they use these people's tragedies. It's really fucking gross. Oh, I got another good video to play for you guys today. Oh, here it is. All right. Here we go. Uh, 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 oh. An hour Under away. section 107 of the Copyright Act. You're an hour away, BS. I applied to volunteer. If you want to help, you can apply to volunteer. Right. Exactly. Like, do it the right way. I just... Oh, my God. It just kills me. Has John just showed up yet? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be 1976 there. allowance is made for fair use. I don't know why people always put this thing in here. You don't have to put that. All right. I always have to skip through it. Um, so this is Betty as of what's today's date. I don't know what today's date is. Oh, I know it. Yep. Yesterday was the 25th because I realized I woke up yesterday and I go on Facebook and I see that it's like my, my friend's birthday and I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, if it's her birthday today, then that means it was my best friend's birthday yesterday. I don't know, dude. I never know what date it is. I'm like, oh my God, I missed her birthday. So I like text her right away. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Tom. Um, all right. So, she's headed to Summer County, Tennessee to search for Sebastian Robbins. Yeah, okay. Oh, my afternoon! Sorry. Sorry if you're wearing uh, uh, headphones. Hey, Pink. Bullhorn Betty, we are talking about Sebastian Rogers and the stuff that's going... Pink! She's so cringe, dude. She's so cringe. ...going on in the case because if you guys don't know, let me inform you... The parents right here have left. They left the area. They got in their camper. They loaded up. They look, you could look at that two ways. You could look at it like they were getting threats online like many parents do. And they just got the fuck out of Dodge. You know, maybe saying, uh, hey, get out of here, Pink. I haven't seen any texts. Like recently? Oh, I gotta go down and look at my phone, girl. I would... I must have missed them. Girl, I've been busy. If it was in the last couple of months, I've been missing a lot of texts and emails and all that stuff because you know how it is. My son was playing hockey and it, my life was crazy. It finally just settled down a little bit. Um, but I'll definitely check when I get off of here. I miss you, girl. When JLR first came to Massachusetts for a nurse lady, he was not welcomed at all. He left quick. Good. He should. 
Oh, it's so gross. Um, oh, anyway, you know, you could look at it a few different ways. Like, the most I'm willing to say is that the, the, the parents interview is definitely a little odd, you know, like, but like, again, I don't know, I'm not in those situations. So I can never like, I, I don't ever want to be in this situation where I have to even fucking think about my not being able to find my kid. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how I would react or how I would be or how I would look. I do know one thing, I would probably never do a fucking interview on TV. But people will still judge you. They'll be like, well, why aren't the parents on TV? You know, you can't win in these situations. Took the car. We're hearing reports that the camper was never even searched. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, the Cajun Navy, uh, I heard that Seth got injured a little bit yesterday. Seth is Sebastian's father right here. That's Seth Rogers. And I heard he got injured yesterday. He kind of handed the the baton over to the Cajun Navy. Uh, She's such a fucking uh, watch woman. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that was built during like Katrina and stuff like that. Um but long story short um it seems like they're taking over but what i don't like is it seems like they're taking over okay isn't that a good thing isn't it a good thing that this search party these people that are you know an organization that's known to go around and search i've never heard of them until this case but i'm just saying like isn't that great that an organization that searches for missing people and has that you know professionalism is taking over no, she's got to sit here and complain about it. That they are just been really disrespectful to social media. They've been, in my opinion, very disrespectful to the volunteers. They've been di very disrespectful by asking you to respect the case. <laughs> yeah, okay. That have been out there. Um, and that's just what I'm hearing. I'm going out there. Um, I'm, I'm hoping... Um, to assist, I'm going to be doing my own searches away from the Cajun Navy. Oh, my God. Because, um, you know, Betty has ground uh, penetrating radar and shit to be doing this. They seem to have a problem with people recording the search efforts out there. But Yeah, that's a problem. But yet when they were over at Riley Strain's case, they had News Nation in their boat with them and stuff like that. So... Uh, that's a little different because News Nation's going to edit the shit out of their, you know, footage. They're not, they're not live most of the time. I just think that they're being very unfair to social media and very unfair. Everybody's unfair to me. Or to the volunteers and then they're like, oh, well, we want volunteers now. You know, after you were so disrespectful and told everybody basically to go home. This lady has no coos. Like, she has no professionalism. She has no ethics. You know, everything, it's like, just, just shut up. Like, bite your tongue every once in a while. Why do you have to get up on a live stream and start putting down this organization? Oh, they've been very unfair to us. Oh, I'm always a victim of everything. Now they want the volunteers. Now they want to work with social media. And I think it's because they're getting some major backlash in in their their behaviors and quite frankly they should be because i don't i don't have pissing contest with i'll tell you right now if anything ever happened to my kid and this motherfucker showed up anywhere near where what happened pff, she'd be fucking leaving in a body bag people that's just one thing i'm not going to do um you know i'm i nobody tells me what to do i follow the law that's all that's required I wouldn't tell you what to do, Betty. I would show you what to do. I would show you the way out of my town with a size nine and a half fucking Nike up your ass. That's what I would do. For me, I have protections of the Constitution. I'm media. It doesn't really matter. I'm media. No, you're not. No, you're not. I mean, I don't ask permission. I'm not going to go and ask them permission to go search for a missing boy. I'm. That is so... Odd. You should ask for permission. Uh, as as BS just said in the in the chat earlier, there's a there's a place where you can sign up to volunteer and search. You know why? You know why they want people to sign up because they want to track. Because a lot of the times these criminals are fucking crazy enough that they will actually help in the search efforts to go. Uh, you know, search for the missing person that they took their life. So um, they want a record of everybody who is down there searching. 
I'm going to go and search for a missing boy. I'm perfectly capable. You should contact law enforcement and ask, what, where, how could you use our help? See, Betty's like my, my brother's wife, okay? Where instead of asking me, you know, how can I help? Because that would have totally, things would have totally went different, you know, when we were doing my mom's estate. Instead of asking me and trying to talk to me like a normal fucking human being, and, and her, my brother, and I, which I asked to do several times and they just refused to do it, Let's sit down and, and delegate tasks, you know, figure out how we're going to do this. Let's sit down and talk and figure out how we're going to do this. Instead of her asking me how she could help in the situation, she just took over and just started doing things on her own without even asking. And that was after my mom asked her to not do that, you know, <laughs> while she was still alive. Betty's the same way. It's just this intrusive, fucking entitled piece of shit mentality. Oh, I hate the people like this. Capable. I've done hundreds of searches. I've been part of law enforcement searches um, many, many times. So it's it's not one of these things. I know not to touch evidence. I, you know what I'm saying? I have like literally carry plastic gloves in my um, of all people that should, you know, that, that can be out there. I've got like latex gloves literally in my backpack. I don't. <laughs> Betty's Walmart forensic kit. Wow. Latex gloves, Betty. What about your shoes? Do you cover your shoes? You know, like, oh my God, this woman's insane. Touch anything. I've got flags in my backpack to mark any type of evidence. So people don't. Uh... Bro, is, I didn't even, like, I don't know, maybe I didn't fully listen to this this morning. I always tell you guys, when I listen to these clips with you guys, I, I hear things that I didn't hear. Did she just say she had fucking flags? Like, all of a sudden, she's, like, taking out little evidence markers, like, out of her bag? Like, what the fuck, dude? Nobody needs you to do that. Um, you know, walk on it, walk through it, trample through it. So This is, like, me walking into the fucking Stony Brook Hospital, Okay. And fucking just pulling out a scalpel and a fucking, you know, sutures and, and, and going in there and being like, I want to be a surgeon. Okay? I want to help. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? You don't do that. Oh, my God. Oh, it's not like, you know, some of these people may not be professionals and stuff like that, but we're looking for this boy. He's a big boy. He's 15 years old. He's 5'5", five, five, 120 pounds. And, you know, they're doing grid searches. They're looking for evidence. Okay, grid searches is not what you need to do when you're looking for a person. They're prop they're, they Oh, so now she's a professional on uh, grid searches. Okay. Uh, the Cajun Navy asked them to step down for just one day, and they could not respect that. Mm. It seemed like they're looking for evidence. I'm not out there looking for evidence. If that's what the kind of searches they want to do, by all means, go out there and, 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 and look for evidence. I'm looking for a boy. I'm looking for a boy on top of the ground, under the ground, or in the water. Um, that's, that's what I'm out there looking for. So I don't know what's going to be going on with this whole thing um, with the Cajun Navy. But, um, you know, I like their organization. I'm not saying anything about that or, or anything. You know, I, I pray that they continue their efforts and stuff like that. All I'm really basically, I think what I'm basically saying is I hope they're a little kinder to social media and the volunteers out there because, you know. Uh, uh, that's probably the last thing that they're fucking worried about, Betty. Honestly, like they're there to do a job. They're not there to worry about your fifis. Okay. Fucking A, man. A lot of us come do this from a labor of love. You know, we're not. Oh, my God. She's such a bullshitter, this woman. She's so full of shit. Being paid by a nonprofit organization. We're not getting compensated. Yep, here it is. It's about the money. By the way, go subscribe to uh, No Wire Hangers. I'll grab the link for you guys. They do a lot of uh, Betty content. Hold on a second. Let me just copy link address and put this in the chat. Oh, my God. It's so much easier to do this way all right she's terrible terrible and they're talking about clicks and views like what these people no that's all you fucking care about people are out there they they bring their audience with them many of these people that are out there their audience are the ones that paid to send them i don't need to fucking go there i don't need you to bring me there them out there so it's it's kind of hard for you to say it's all about a click and a view no it's not because you wouldn't even have that body if it wasn't for that channel channel 
Betty thinks she's the end all be all. If not for her channel, we wouldn't ever find anyone yet, right? So it's like I, I don't I don't understand why they're being so rude. Um, I hope that that changes because I'm going to be going out there. I'm going out there to help. Um, oh my god, dude! Um, You're going out there to help yourself to some fucking money. Okay, so you could fund more of your Trump fucking rally bullshit. But I'm not going to ask permission, and I'm not going to have any anybody tell me what I can and cannot do if I'm following the law. That's all that's required. Hey, Alicia, my, my non-friend. <laughs> of me. Um, anything out over and above that, if I, if I make a mistake, I have to own that stuff, right? I mean, I've got to, if I do something wrong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, we don't get it. You are a clown. <laughs> you are a clown. Saying, you don't own anything. <laughs> you don't own anything. I'm the one that has to pay the consequences for it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I follow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to be ching ching. I'm not going to be coming on TikTok saying I need bail money. Okay, you guys don't have to worry about bailing Bullhorn Betty out of jail. I promise. I promise. Oh my God, dude. I can't. I can't. She's such a fucking clown, this woman. Such a clown. Oh my god. This is what I just watched. And I, hold on, I'm gonna grab the link. If you're interested with this whole Diddy thing. Uh, it was quite interesting. I know some of you guys are like a little older and probably, you know, weren't into rap music. And I get it. But this was my, my life. I was big into the, you know, rap scene when I was a kid. Not the scene. It's not like I hung out with rappers. I'm just saying. I was, you know, this was our our gem. This is how we, uh, what we listened to. Soundtrack of my life. Diddy, Biggie, Jay-Z, you know, all this shit. Craig Mack, uh, fucking bad boy. I was a big bad boy fan, but, uh, yeah. Good shit. Watch this if you're interested. It really goes into some of the uh, really fucking shady things that Diddy has been involved in. So, very interesting, Tupac. Um, I don't know if they have him in custody yet. It seems to me that this morning when I kind of looked to see what was going on, uh, they don't know where he is. I heard he was in uh, Miami. I heard he was in, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, somewhere else. So, um, I, I like Jay-Z personally. I enjoy his music, but he's gotten definitely weird over the years. Um, Diddy, I remember, I will never forget the day, I. it's so funny, you know, not funny, but uh, Biggie died on March 7th, which is two days after my birthday, and I remember, I will never forget it for as long as I live, I was in the car with my mom, I turned on Hot 97, which is a rap station here, and they announced that he had been shot, you know, in in uh, on the radio, I think it was on March 7th when they announced it, it had to be the 7th or the 8th where they announced it, and I was heading up to the mall to go birthday shopping. My mom was bringing me to go get, like, whatever it was that I wanted for my birthday that year. Like, probably clothes, if I had to imagine, because that's all I ever wanted was clothes or sneakers or something. Shoes, whatever. And uh, I heard that on the radio, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I ran into the mall, and the, the pay phones, I had to use the pay phone. I called my best friend up. I'm like, she better answer. I was like, dude, Biggie got shot, you know? And, um... And I was like, I can't, we couldn't believe it. I was at a concert when Tupac got shot, when they announced that. And then I was, I was at a, um, I was at a really good concert. The Fugees were there, LL Cool J, uh, Busta Rhymes. It was a good concert. But anyway, so Biggie got shot. And I, 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 I mean, even back then, I was in high school still when Biggie got shot and Ready to Die dropped, right? Like, right around, uh, what was it, 98, I think? Ready to Die drop. Was it 98 or 97? It might have been 97. And and I remember, like, I felt so weird about it when, you know, Diddy just kind of jumped in the spotlight. If you ever watch Diddy in interviews, he's got dead eyes. Like, I hate him. I, I, I Look, I enjoyed his music sometimes. Oh, they had footage at the airport? All right. Um, I enjoyed his music at, at some points, but like him as a person, I, I don't know. I just never trusted him because I, first of all, in his interviews, right? I remember watching all his interviews back then and he just has these like deadpan eyes. I can't explain it. Like he never, 
everybody else that's talking, that's ever talked about the Biggie situation, right? You could see the 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 sadness in their eyes when they're talking. And when Diddy, anytime Diddy's ever done an interview and talked about Biggie's death or any of that shit, she has like this dead stare, this deadpan look. And then when he's not, when he doesn't have the deadpan look, he's wearing sunglasses a lot indoors, which I find really weird. Is that, like, I, I almost feel like it's to cover his eyes up. But I felt, I remember the, the moment I felt the most uncomfortable was when he was at the MTV Music Awards and they did I'll Be Missing You because I'm like, this is so weird. You know, I remember thinking to myself, like, how did he get a song out this quick? You know, like, I from what I understood at the time, it took a while to produce songs. Like, you got to remember, this is like long before the days of computers really being used as much as they are in music now. I mean, they use synthesizers and shit like that, but it wasn't as computerized as it is now and I'm like man like it took them I mean yes did they sample a song so they didn't really have to worry about a track but like it was just odd you know like the whole thing and I was like it's almost like he's basking in the limelight like if you remember Diddy he was and, and Suge Knight even commented on this right after the east coast west coast beef started Suge Knight is is at the uh what was it was it the Soul Train Awards I don't know it's some award show and he's basically saying you know, I'm not, you don't got to worry about the producers all up dancing in the videos, you know, like, because that was Diddy. He was always in the background. Like, it's almost like he wanted the spotlight. I don't know. I always, I, at the time, I didn't feel that he killed Biggie. I didn't think that in my head. I just thought more like, I don't know, just something was weird, you know, like, I'm like, why is he like basking in the glory of his friend dying? I just, typically when an artist dies, you don't see that. You know, like when Tupac was shot, you didn't see all his like people basking in the glory of his of his death. I felt like he just capitalized off of Biggie's death so much and really took advantage of it, you know, because he was so loved by people. And if anybody knows anything about me, I'm a huge Biggie fan. Like that was my favorite. Like my names always on, on here was having to do with Biggie. Any internet name I had. So, um, I don't know. It's really sad. Uh, it's a sad thing, but, you know, now I, after listening to a lot of people who've come out, Gene Deal being one of them, he was Diddy's, uh, bo a bodyguard at the time. Um, the time when the, you know, Shine Barrow thing happened and the J-Lo thing happened. And so probably people are like, who's Shine? If you didn't listen to rap music, you probably don't know who Shine is, but you know who J-Lo is. So you know that there was this incident in the club and, uh, the guy Shine, you know, was supposed to be Diddy's next big artist, right? And he basically went to jail and that was it. You know, he dropped his album. I don't even know if his whole album dropped. I think it did. And he went to jail. So, and I liked Shine. He sounded just like Biggie. It was weird too, though, to hit that he got Shine. It was almost like he was trying to replace Biggie. And that was weird. And I liked Shine, you know, but I was like, he sounds almost identical to Biggie's voice and everything. Um, But... I watched this documentary and it was really interesting because it got, you know, it got into some detail, not too much, but about Tupac, you know, being shot. And I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that. You know, Tupac came here. He was supposed to do a, a collaboration with, you know, Bad Boy Records with Biggie. And he comes here and he gets shot and then he's in the hospital. And then that's how the whole thing really kind of started. It was, um, you know, the whole East Coast, West Coast beef. You know, then Pac did hit him up, which to this day is one of the most fucking savage diss tracks in the world. Um, and, and one of my favorites. Even though I love Biggie, I still love that song. I mean, it's just, it's a fucking genius masterpiece that he wrote. But um, anyway, so he, you know... That started the whole East Coast, West Coast beef. But the weirdest thing to me was that... And Biggie got in a car accident right before he died, okay? Which is weird too, right? Think about it. He got in a car accident right before he died. All these people that are associated with Pac, I mean with, with Diddy, all these weird things happened to him, right? So you got Biggie gets in a car accident, okay? After Pac is shot. Now Pac supposedly supposedly hooked up with this guy Keefe D I think his name was and he was like a, a blood uh no I'm sorry he was a crip the the death row people were affil affiliated with the bloods supposedly right and the and the east coast the bad boy people were got affiliated with the crips and 
KVD has told stories. There's interviews on here about him, you know, being offered money to take Pac, uh, Pac out, right? Well, you guys know, sure enough, Tupac dies. Biggie, you know, the, the shit just kept escalating, right? They kept running into each other in different places. There kept being these, you know, fights and whatever at, at, at award shows and all these different promotional things. And then all of a sudden, Biggie gets in a car accident and he's supposed to go to this thing in London, right? He's supposed to go to this, um, basically like, I don't know, some type of <sighs> promotional thing in London. And instead of going there, Diddy is begging him to go to this party. I think it was at Scott Storch's house. It was an after party. There was a, a war or some show in the East on the West coast. And then, um, this after party and he seemed more concerned to get big to the after party. So Mace was also on the label at this time and Mace didn't want to go. So he stayed behind, which is weird because at that time, Mace was kind of the bigger artist, you know, Biggie was still big, but Mace was like up and coming and, and getting really popular. He didn't want Mace there. He wanted Biggie there. So Biggie had Liz like was in a cast. He didn't want to go because, you know, he's a big guy. It would have been uncomfortable for him to go on the plane and so they, I mean, Puff Daddy, he just, Puff Daddy, that's what we used to call him. He wouldn't, uh, he just wouldn't let up. Like, he wanted him to be there. He just kept asking him and asking him and asking him and asking him. And he finally convinced them to, to come. And then he ends up getting shot. Then, I mean, it just keeps going on. It's like, you know, okay, Biggie dies. He's basking in the limelight, which is just so fucking weird, right? Then he turns to Diddy. Um, and then, uh... Kim Porter, his ex-wife, dies, okay? Uh, the guy that Kim was talking to dies. Um, who else? Uh, there was another person in there. Albie Shore, who she was dating, I think, before Diddy. Something happens to him, right? Then the record, uh, the guy that brought Diddy into his, when he was an intern, brought him into the music industry, base, basically, and that's a whole nother fucking weird story. He dies, right? I mean, there's just, like, dude, how many people this guy has been involved with has died, right? How many fucking people have died? Now, his wife, his ex-wife, Kim Porter, when they, like, broke up, he was, like, still controlling her life, stalking her, tapped her phone, supposedly, um, and then, then he gets involved with Cassie, and there's a whole crazy story on this thing about Cassie, who is a beautiful, you know, young artist. She was 20 and Diddy's like 38 or some shit at the time. And he gets involved with Cassie and that ends up being a nightmare. And there's a story told on here that she goes to do, um, well, first of all, she hooks up with, with I think it was uh, Wiz Khalifa, right? Uh, is he the one that does day and night? Du -du 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 -du. I'm not like so familiar with all these new artists, but he, she... She starts dating with him. Diddy threatens that he's going to blow up uh, Wiz Khalifa's car. And there's footage of his car being blown up. Like from security footage. You can see it. <clears throat> it's like a Mercedes or something being blown up. Okay. Then she goes to do an album with uh, Wale. Okay. Who is another up and coming rapper. And everybody in the studio is telling them, like, dude, don't don't stare at Cassie too long. Like, Diddy's obsessed. He's crazy over this girl. And th now this has never been confirmed by Wally, but other people that were there tell the story that Diddy shows up at the studio, chases him around, and they, next thing you know, the guy's, which is such a New York thing, and this is why I believe it. I 100% believe this, because this is, like, a known thing that happens to fucking punks in the, in the city. Uh, if you grew up, it happened to my dad when he was a kid. Um, <clears throat> you hang people out the windows by their feet, you know, of like a third story building. It's kind of known. My dad's brother did it to him when he was a kid. And uh, that's supposedly what they did to him. So, so yeah. I mean, there's just, look. You got the gun incident. You got Biggie dying. You got Pac dying. You got Pac being shot before Diddy, you know, before any of this. I personally... I, I do think nowadays that, that Diddy definitely had something to do with Biggie's death. I think he, I think when he had Biggie, you know, he had to take Tupac out. Tupac was the competition for Bad Boy Records, right? He wanted Bad Boy Records because before then, Death Row was a big thing. I mean, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, right? When Tupac came around, forgot it. And then I think that he wanted to take the competition out to try to take down Death Row Records. 
He kills Pac, and what does he do? He makes Death Row Records even more money. I mean, how many post... Uh, I can never say that word. Pathemia... Post... Whatever. Pathemius, I think is the word. Records has Pac come out with after he died. That probably sold just as much as the you know records when he was alive. So I think he realized at that point, Biggie's worth more dead than he is alive. And then he took Biggie out. Or maybe Biggie knew something. Why would you convince him to come to this? And why did it happen in California? Think about that. Biggie could have been shot anywhere. But why did it happen in California? So I think there's so many... There's just... You know, it's like my mom always said. If it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck. Posthumous. I can never say that word. Um, Just like <laughs> literary... I can never fucking say this word. Literary. Literary. Right? Literary. I brought my son to a literary thing last night at his school. And, oh my God, it's a whole other story. But, um, anyway. Yeah. How, how many things? It's a duck. Right? If it walks like a, a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a ditty. That's all I gotta say about that. Definitely something shady. But check this out if you're interested. I'll put the link in here. It's it pretty much like... It goes through all the shady things without like any bullshit it shows i've watched a lot of these interviews over the years with um with these people gene deal uh what's the other girl's name there's a woman who came out who was close with diddy she was like a um i don't know she worked with him i forget her name right now but there's a whole bunch of these interviews that i've watched over the years because i still follow like the i still follow this shit you know um because it, it was I, I enjoyed rap music, like, really, really fucking enjoyed it, so, when I was growing up, so. I was, like, the mix master CD maker in my town, like, everybody used to come to me for fucking CDs, because I used to pirate the shit out of music on, like, LimeWire and Napster, and, like, a lot of my friends didn't even have computers, like, in high school or, you know, middle school, or even in college, you know, like, they didn't have uh, the means to do it. And my brother, he was, like, the fucking... My brother was, like, a computer nerd, like, genius. So I wouldn't have been able to do this shit without him showing me how to do it. And so everybody used to come to me, like, Could you, yo, you make... Like, my, my mixtapes kind of got known around the hot... Like, you know, the neighborhood. Because I would put together, like, really cool mixtapes with good songs on them. So um, they kind of got known. I was really, really into it, so... Um, so I still keep up with this shit, but here's a link to this. LimeWire, yeah, Napster, all that shit. Anyway, um, yeah, last night I brought my son to this literary thing. Lit literary, right? I think I'm saying that right. Um, at his school, right? <laughs> I felt bad. He thought, he, I, I don't think he understood what was going on. What happened was, I guess, there was like a writing contest kind of thing, and the teacher was picking winners, so my my son was very excited. He thought he was going to, like, win something. He's like, oh, I hope mine wins. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, all right. I don't know. I'm like, I didn't know what was going on. So I got, I got there, and um, I realized when we got there that the people that were had won already, and they were there, they were going to be presenting. Because he kept telling me, he's like, all oh, the kids in my class are going to be there, and they're reading their stories, and I want to hear them read their stories, and this and that. So I was like, okay, you know. So we went down there. I don't know. It was like the weirdest thing. I don't know who organized this thing, but it was very strange. It was like, I don't know. I kind of like pictured before we went that it was going to be like a, you know, like a, almost like a, how they would put on a concert. You know, like you sit in the auditorium and you listen to the kids read their stories. But they had it, like, split up. It was just so weird. I don't know. The way they did it. So we're waiting. You know, he can't find any of his friends from his class. And I, I think that his friends in school probably were like, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. And then you know how kids are. They, like, they say they're doing things and then they, like, don't even ask their parents. So anyway, I, I thought it was cool that he was all excited to hear his, you know, friends' stories or whatever. So we, we were sitting in the one room waiting for the kids to come because they were doing, I don't know, they split it up where it was like the first grade through third grade read and then it was like fourth grade and fifth grade. I don't know. It was just so weird. So we're like, we're sitting there listening to these third and the third graders read their stories. And I, dude, I seriously almost busted out in tears. Um, I almost busted out. Well, I think so too. Life Rewinded. The LAPD definitely had a hand in that. Um... I almost busted out in tears. So this last, the last little girl to grow up. Oh my God. 
she gets up there. She walks up in front of the... There wasn't that many people there at this point in time because most of the people had left the room. They were only there to watch their, you know, their own kids. So there was a couple of families, me and Jesse, and then that was it. You know, it was a small group of people. I'd say like maybe like 20 people in there. But she gets up and, and we're like sitting there waiting for her to start reading. And I got to give these kids credit. I mean, I can't believe how many of them just got up and read their stories with, like, nothing. You know, like, no problem. Because, like, I was, I have a fear, like, believe it or not, I have a fear of public speaking. It's different talking to you guys on here, but to, like, stand up in front of a crowd of, of people while everybody is, like, staring at you. Like, I remember I gave a speech at my dad's wake, and I felt like I was going to pass out. Even though everybody in the room was my family, it, it, and I knew everybody in the room, I still felt uncomfortable with just everybody staring at me. Like, I was like, ugh, like, ugh, I didn't like it. But anyway, this little girl, she gets up, and she's holding the paper up, like, directly in front of her face, like, almost covering her face, and she's just standing there, and the whole room is silent. I mean, dead silent. You could hear, like, a pin drop. And she's just standing there, and, like, everybody's, like, looking around the room, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, because she's, like, just standing there total silence. So I'm not even joking you for five minutes straight, five fucking minutes straight. This little girl just stood there frozen, completely fucking frozen. And you know, I kind of got like, I, I swear to God, I felt her like, I don't know. I don't know if I hate saying I'm an empath, but like I could feel people's energy. I felt that little girl's like anxiety. Like I felt it. And I almost started crying because I felt so bad for her. Like my eyes welled up. I was like, Jesse, I'm going to cry. I'm like, Oh my God, I feel so bad for this little girl right now. I, Oh my God. I was so, it was horrible. It was just horrible. I'm like, this little girl's going to remember this for the rest of her life. Um, so like a whole five minutes go, goes by the teachers that are standing up there that are like helping the kids out out of three of them, only one of them was, like, talking to her, and, like, to me, they weren't doing anything to comfort her. Like, I, I almost at one point in time felt like getting up and just walking up there and being like, I'll stand next to you while you read this. Like, I just couldn't believe that these, like, teachers were just standing there, like, staring at her, just making her feel, in my opinion, making her feel more uncomfortable. You know, it's very intimidating when you're a kid. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people forget what it's like to be a kid. Like, I I have very vivid memories of feelings that I had when I was a kid. Like, I remember feeling embarrassed or uncomfortable and, like, in certain situations. And I feel like some adults just don't, like, remember that. You know what I'm saying? And And they don't know what to do in those situations. So eventually, after like five minutes of everybody staring at this poor little girl awkwardly, she just handed the teacher back the paper and like ran off the, you know, ran off and, and went to her mom and she was crying. Uh, oh my God, I felt so bad for this little girl. Because I was like, dude, that's a, that's a moment in your life that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. You know, you're going to remember that forever. Oh, it was so sad. It was so sad. Because um, I, I was there. I, I did that. I mean, I kind of purposely did it at my cheerleading tryouts but the whole room was staring at me you know I had been on the squad the cheerleading squad for the fall season but when the winter season came there was like a dance routine and I just stood there like while my best friend did the routine I literally just stood there like still because like I just couldn't remember the routine and and it was so embarrassing because it was like the older high school girls were judging us and and I remember I just stood there and I was like, I can't do it. And then after it, they were like, come on. The whole room was like, come on, Leanna, do it again, you know? And I was just like, no, I'm not doing it again. Like, I just said, fuck it. I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to attempt. It was like, it was a choice of either making myself look like a fucking asshole because I didn't remember the dance or just standing there and just knowing that I'm not going to make the team and just being there for my friend to support my friend because she needed a tryout partner. You know, so I, I basically like stood there. I kind of knew I was going to do that before I went into the tryout because I just didn't know the dance routine. So I was like, I'm not doing the dance routine. Like, I don't give a fuck, you know, if I don't meet the team. But I promised my friend that I would stand by her and be her partner for tryouts. So I didn't want to disappoint her. So I just stood there. <laughs> it's just like, I'll stand there. But it was embarrassing nonetheless. You know, the whole room's like, come on, Liana, do it again. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm like, I'm good. I was like, I'm good. Yeah, the teacher should have stepped in or her mom. Her mom was sitting there. That was that was what made it even more uncomfortable. Her mom was sitting there filming her. 
So she, her mom's going to have like a five minute long video of her daughter literally having a fucking panic attack. Like this poor little girl, she kept trying. You could see she kept trying. She was like pulling the paper down and like you could see she was like ready to start and she just the words wouldn't come out of her mouth. But then, OK, so then after that, this is where things get fucking strange to me. After that. My son's like, none of my friends are in here, right? We wait for the fourth and fifth graders to come in. And my son's like, I don't see any of my friends in here. He's like, I don't know where my class is. I don't know. He seemed to think his whole class was going to be there. It was so bizarre. So I'm like, all right. Well, they were, they were doing another reading in another room for the fourth and fifth grade. So we're like, okay, let's go in there. So we go in the auditorium where they're doing another reading, right? One was in the library. One was in the auditorium. We go in the auditorium, right? And we sit down, and he still doesn't see any of his friends. There's one girl from his class, and she's doing a reading. And these two kids from completely different other elementary schools get up, and they're reading their things. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way that these kids wrote this shit. No way, Ash, you did the same thing. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know anybody else who'd, who would do that. That's great. Dude, the... The, I'm like, dude, this kid's talking about deforestation and fucking... In fifth grade, this kid wrote this whole big long thing about deforestation and the effects of the, you know, deforestation. And, like, some of the words he was using, I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way this fifth grader, okay, fucking knew all this shit. Either my kid's really stupid, okay, or, or the, you know what I'm saying? Like, my son wouldn't know all this shit to write something like that. I'm like... Dude, come on. I have a fifth grader, too. Like, th there's no fucking way. Like, my son's a pretty smart kid. Like, I'm like, there's no way that my that this kid wrote this shit and understands any of this shit. Yeah, that's what I think. Chat GPT wrote it. Because I'm like, dude, I mean, some of the words he was using. Then the next kid gets up and he's talking about, like, the effects of plastic bags, you know. And, and like, he was really good, this kid. He read it. With such, like, uh, I, I gotta say, I was like, I don't know, I might believe that this kid wrote this, because, like, the way he read it, you know how most kids sound very robotic when they're reading? Like, they'll be like, this video is for educational purposes, all works can be cited, nothing stated is of Swamp Stories knowledge. Like, they don't have the inflections in their voice to, like, this kid was like, this video is for educational purposes. Like, he had such, like, a, a character while he was reading this thing. But I was like... I was like, I still, I was like, dude, like, how does this kid know all this shit about plastic bags? I'm like, I don't know about this. I'm like, I, I'm like looking at my son. My son even knew. My son goes, the first thing my son says to me, he goes, mom, he probably copied and pasted this from Google. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, there's no way a kid wrote this. Like, I'm sorry. It just, it was too fucking in involved. It did not sound like a fifth grader wrote it. And then I kind of felt like that's unfair my son's story was written about, it was about a, a fucking hanging out with his friends at hockey, okay? And, and I'm like, my son's story sounds like a fifth grader wrote it, you know? And I'm like, these kids do not sound like fifth graders wrote these stories. I'm sorry, but they did, no fucking fifth grader knows all this shit. And uses, like, words like exponential. A fifth grader knows what exponential means? Are you fucking kidding me? So I was like, no. No, I'm like, they fucking copied and pasted. And that's so unfair because these kids are winning the contest and they're, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no even creativity to the story. They obviously copied and pasted from somewhere. So after the second kid, after his friend, this girl, I think that's why he might have wanted to be there. I don't know. I was still trying to figure out why he wanted to be there. Because I'm like, this isn't like his thing. Like, he's usually not into like these types of things. So I was like, why does he want to go to this thing so bad? I still couldn't figure it out. He's never asked me before. And then, and then this girl was reading and I'm like, Ooh, I'm like, does he have a crush on this girl? Is that why I'm bringing him here? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It was like so weird. But after the girl read his, the girl from his class, he's like, we're out of here. He's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, all right. And then he's like, I need socks at Dick's Sporting Goods. So I let him, uh, uh, con me, shall I say, into bringing him to Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> he's good, my son, I will say. He knows if he goes shopping with me. He's going to get more than if he goes shopping with my husband. So he's very smart, my son. You know, he knows, like, if he needs certain things, he'll ask my husband to bring them. If it's anything hockey-related, he asks my husband. But if it's anything else, he, you know, he gets me. He's like, Mom, can I need socks. And he does need socks. He always needs socks. Because I don't know where his socks go. 
Um, but, you know, we run out of socks like halfway through the school year. We can't find matches to any of his socks, you know. Actually, he did last a little longer this year, although he got some socks for Christmas. But he, he, he's been better about putting his clothes in the hamper and, you know, tracking his socks. <laughs> but yeah, he uh, conned me into getting him a football so he could play football at recess. That's really why he wanted to go there. He didn't need socks. I'm like, I'm like, dude, this whole day is so weird. I'm like, you want to go to this literary thing and now you want socks? Like, of all things in the world, you want socks? I'm like, well, that's fucking weird, but all right. So, yeah, it was pretty funny. So, you had major Trojan issues? No, I never had any problems because my brother, again, was a computer nerd. And everything was... I never got a virus or anything like that. I knew... I kind of knew the right things to download. There was, you know... It was kind of obvious when you were downloading, whether it was in the title or the size of the file... You know, like, okay, uh, a music file is not going to be, like, one gigabyte, you know? So, I'm not going to download that. You know, you're going to download, it's going to be a couple of kilobytes or megabytes. So, but if you've seen a, a file that was, like, bigger or whatever, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not downloading that. Most of the songs are the same size, file-wise, so, you know. Plus, we had all sorts of shit on our computer to protect us. Um... Jesse is a child I should have been. <laughs> He's the child everybody should have been. They want our grandson to be in the debate team and go, oh, that's pretty cool. They told him we haven't had a chance to be noticed and you can do it. He's on the spectrum and said go for the experience. That's awesome, though. Um, So, yeah. So, yeah. That was interesting. Timu has great socks for cheap. Throw away money on boy socks. Well, you know a blank slate. He needed the Nike socks. I think he also wanted, he wanted a Jordan. I think part of the reason he went there was because he wanted to show me what he wanted for Easter. I think the other part was because he wants a Jordan jersey. And the other reason is because he wanted a football. You know how kids are. But he had to get Nike socks. He had to get Nike socks. So, yeah, that's what he gets. The all black. He likes the long ones. He won't even fuck with a pair of ankle socks. He won't even fuck with a pair of ankle socks or no-show socks. He wants them, those tube socks only. He's very picky about his socks, my son. Which I was too. I am too. I noticed I just bought myself new socks because I needed no-show socks, which I, I don't even know why I bought them because I hate them. I forgot how much I hate them. I rather wear no socks than no-show socks. I bought a new pair of sneakers, so I was like, oh, I need no-show no socks. So I go buy them at TJ Maxx, right? First of all, I noticed that, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, they are not putting the little fuzzies in, in the socks anymore. And I'm like, why is this? Why are we not putting the fuzzies in the socks? Why are these just all like flat socks? Are you serious, chick? Really? Where'd you hear that? Oh, no. That's sad. Oh, man. Man, she's young. <sighs> That's terrible. No shows are the worst. They slip off your feet. Is that like confirmed? Um, I like the Reebok ones too. Those are pretty good. I like, no, not Reebok, Avia. Avia, I think it is from Walmart. I, those have been my thing. Oh, of course Laura's going live about it. Profit time. <sighs> She's sickening. She's fucking sickening. Hold on, I'm going to. Let me let me see what her title says. Of course, of course. Oh, she. I. I can't. I. I don't think I'm gonna be able to watch Laura on this one. Sorry, with her fake fucking bullshit crying and everything. Sorry, just don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. I'm very sad to hear about Jonice though, man, because that girl's young and um, shit. You know, she has young kids, from what I understand, and. Growing up without a mom, you know, I'm lucky that I got to have my mom into, like, my uh, 30s and adulthood. But for people who lost their parents, either one mom or dad, <clears throat> at such a young age, I, I just can't even imagine growing up without a parent, you know? I mean, I was young. I feel like I was young when my dad passed away at 25. But, um, you know, like elementary school, middle school age kids losing their parents is, is terrible. 
Fly high, you will be forever missed to the moon and back beautiful. Our beautiful Jonice is now an angel. That's very, very, very sad. Let's see what she has to say. Hold on. I, don't I mean, we kind of knew this was coming because, not that it makes it any less sad, I'm just saying that uh, we knew this was kind of coming because she was um, on hospice, you know? So, I mean, I kind of, we kind of, we kind of knew this. I, 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 I just, did Laura check with the family yet? Like, to see if, like, they're okay with her putting this out to the YouTube universe? I hope so. Oh, my God. She played a million sad songs. Hold on. She must have just started it because... All right. Let's see what happened. So, yeah, I found out about... Oh, wait. Hold on. All right. I can't listen to this. I don't need the sad songs. Hey, guys. So, yeah, I found out about... 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, I didn't text anybody. I didn't put, I didn't why write are you, it anywhere. Hold on a second. Or I just. Hey, asshole. Why are you so obsessed about Laura? Somebody just came in my chat. Laura hasn't even mentioned today, okay? Somebody just came in my chat and said that the girl Joni's died. I'd like to know what happened, because guess what? I wasn't really great friends with Joni's, but I was, I did talk to her at times you know, when I was friendly with Laura and stuff. So, yeah, I'd like to know what happened to her exactly. I'd like to know. So, fuck you. And see your way out of my fucking chat, douche. Fucking Corey, probably. Bye. It all, you know, everybody at once. But yeah, Jonice's husband contacted me about 30 minutes ago. Oh, jeez. That she passed about an hour ago. And uh, I I knew it. Like, I just knew it. I had, I thought about her last night and I'm like, I have to find, I have to get a hold of her. I haven't spoken to her. And then last night I had a dream about her. And oh my God. Laura, you did not have a dream about her. Just stop. Just say that you're sad about her passing and that's it. And I woke up. This it always she always makes it about her that you know I was dreaming about her and thinking about her. And, uh, no, you weren't. Shut up. This morning. And sorry, I, I'm sorry if this seems mean, but she's so full of shit. I just can't. Just knew it. And then like she's just like Molly go lightly. It's like I predicted this. Everything I knew. I think I know everything's gonna happen all the time. It's about me. Five minutes after I woke up, he contacted me. I don't remember most of the dream, but I remember having a dream. So she doesn't even remember the dream, but she knew she had a dream about Jonice. Give me a fucking break, Lord. Just tell us what happened to her. Like, you know, wish her the best. I don't even know why she has to be live about this necessarily. Like, she just fucking exploits everything. That I why I knew I shouldn't have watched this. <laughs> I shouldn't have watched it. And I remember thinking in the dream, I gotta reach out to her. I gotta reach out to her. Okay. And... Bullshit. I don't believe any of this. Laura did not have a fucking dream about her last night. I woke up and she was... Melanie Jonice, unfortunately. Gone. Jesus. And I just busted out hysterical crying. This is like the worst week ever. Why is this all about her? It was supposed to be a good week. And it's turned into like the worst week ever imaginable. Laura, this isn't about you. So talk about Jonice and how great of a person she was. Oh my God, dude. Um. Oh my God. There's so much you could say about Jonice. Like she was a very friendly person. She was a very caring person. She was loyal to, I mean, a different level like I've never seen, okay? I don't even know her that well, and I could say these things about her, okay? She was always positive. Yeah, did she get in her little, you know, arguments with people here on YouTube? Sure, but, you know, not, 
she was never overly nasty or, or horrible to anybody. She was a very, very kind person, you know? And, and the part just thinking about her kids is what really breaks my heart because she's so young. She's younger than me. She's in her 30s still. I mean, that is just heartbreaking to think that, you know, her kids are going to be without a mother and, you know, the dad's going to be left behind and, and a grieving parent is, you know, is never fun to be around. I You know, just to put it honestly like that you know a grieving parent is is hard enough to deal with it's hard to lose a parent and then it's hard to deal with a grieving parent and your own grief um and that's a lot for little kids i can't even imagine what they're going through right now this is not about laura this is about jonice and her family and everything and yeah you should definitely check with the family before you go doing this shit <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say. No, it shouldn't be monetized, but but as you can see right here, look. As you can see right here, the super chat button's still on. She was so loved. She would be so missed. And she honestly, she made me a better person. She did. This is still about her. She made me get through my own cancer. She's made, she's given me strength that she never knew she gave me. And she was just about her dying when my kids were two and 11. Oh my God. That's horrible. Ugh. Just so full of love. I mean, she really was. She was just so full of love. She did bring light to a lot of people. I agree with that. I can't. So now she's going to read all her chat. Can't start it over, Karen. What? Oh, I, I'm, I'm behind, so the chat's not. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I don't know, dude. If I was really upset, like, I would not come on here a half hour after I found out this devastating news about my friend while I'm still crying to, you know, spark up a live stream so everybody could sit here and listen to me sniffle and, and cry. Like, this is... <sighs> Laura, just why do you do this shit? My goodness. Let her family go through... You know, a simple community post would have really sufficed in this situation. I know, cheesy. And that's what we always say to ourselves to make it better. <laughs> but at the end of the day, she's gone. Winston! At the end of the day, she's gone, and I'll never be able to hear her voice again. I'll never see her crazy emojis again. Me, me, I, I, me. I mean, she just stood for everything that so many of us wish we could be. You know what I mean? She just, she was the type of person. She just always looked for the positive. Weird. She jumped so fast while her own family and close friends in real life are more important. Laura, go kick rocks. Dork, feel bad. Don't feel bad for Laura. I don't feel bad at all. I know the people in her chat do, and I'm sure they're going to criticize me for saying this. But I just, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, if I was, if I found out that one of my friends passed away, I, I just don't think I would be able to jump on a fucking live stream like this crying. Even when it was negative, you know what I mean? Like, she's just... Let me just say something. Jodie's is in a way better place right now. I know people hate hearing that, but the suffering that she was probably going through with cancer, I've seen what it does to people. I mean, she's so young and nobody wants that to happen. But my God, I would not want that girl suffering here in the pain that she was probably in because I'm sure she was probably in a tremendous amount of pain, you know? Um, 
I found comfort in that when my mom passed away and my dad both. Like, I found comfort in knowing that they weren't suffering here anymore because it's, like, horrible to watch somebody suffer like that. But, oh, my God, she's just so young. That's just terrible. It's absolutely terrible to think about that. <sighs> She's just so young, dude. This girl is so young. Suffering is terrible. Watching somebody suffer is so horrible. I just think of her young children having to watch that. You know, because, like, as a grown adult, I felt so helpless watching my mom. And I can't imagine with her young children, right? Her kids are, like, young. is only in her 30s, Kate. She's only in her 30s. You know, I cannot imagine what a child, a child having to see that. I don't know. I, I don't know how hospice works in um, everywhere, but I know that in a lot of other states here, they don't put you on hospice until you're like days away from dying. But in other states, I heard you could be on hospice. This is what a hospice nurse here told me because she worked in other states. She said like you could be on hospice for a very long amount of time in other states. Um, <clears throat> but anyway... She, uh, she, when she went on hospice, like, I don't know, I think she was home, I'm pretty sure, and, and, uh, you know, her kids having to, like, witness that, like, I, I, at that age, I just, I cannot even imagine what they're going through right now. That is, it's just un, uncomprehensible, incomprehensible, sorry. I know she's not paying. Oh, sen sensory, yeah, palliative, palliative care. My mom was on that as well. Oh my God, I was thirty when it made me feel like a kid again. I can't imagine how her babies felt now. Anymore. And I know her family's not in pain anymore. I mean, now it's a different kind of pain. No, that's true. But she just, she did. She made me a better person. Back to Laura. To be honest with you, I never ever thought that somebody, I mean, I met her in person, but, you know, for years before that, I just never thought. Oh, my God, Judith, that is so terrible. Oh, God, that is like my worst nightmare during COVID. For anybody that passed during COVID, um, wow. Fuck you, Tammy Lou. How about that? Get the fuck out of here. That somebody on. Go listen to Laura cry. For the internet that I didn't didn't hadn't met at that time could ever truly make me a better person and she did in a lot of ways I mean she was just always looking at the bright side of things and always looking at things in a different perspective I know she loved me so much, and I loved her so much, Lydia. I truly did. Oh, yeah, social feed. That's what I'm saying. I can't even imagine the pain she was in. She was such a little spunker. What? She was a gift to me, too, Allie. And she knows that, and I told her that. Thank you, Tracy. I did. I told her that. To have my mom, I had COVID. She passed alone. Oh my God, that is just a nightmare. Uh, Tammy just got Tammy just got timed uh timed out. She could fuck off. A lot of people think that it was, you know, things that how much she loved me, but I also loved her. A lot of people have said my daughter is a hospice nurse director and nurse. Director and I'm sorry, my daughter is a hospice director and nurse. She has been alongside many people who had nobody there in their last moment. She tried to use iPad, iPads to allow fa families to see family. Dude, I can't even imagine. God bless the people that you know work in the hospice industry because I don't think I would I would be able to do that. Um, Kate, she had from what I understand, I believe it was um uh colon cancer or, or something to do with her colon. And you know how much she meant to me, how much I meant to her, but she also meant the same to me. Oh I'll never forget her, ever. 
And I don't, I honestly don't even think I could put in words how much she inspired me to do better, how much she pushed me to do better. And she, I've told her this. I mean, there's nothing I have. Oh, it's rectal cancer. I right. haven't told her. And I made sure of that, that I told her everything I have wanted to tell her before she passed. So when I did get the phone call, I didn't have any regrets. Why is she like laughing? The only thing I didn't get a chance to tell her is how much I miss her. I know, b this is like too much. But I think that's normal. I think most people don't get that option. <laughs> text would have worked no she is so kind ash apparently she didn't inspire enough to do better because she's been doing nothing but being horrible to everybody and yet she was still a big spunk she fought like no other i have panels i have her on panel i'll have to find the videos of i may have erased them from years ago where she just went off the hook she was cursing people, yelling at people. She's like, oh my god, dude. Fuck that. Nobody picks on my Laura. We were like, damn, where'd you come from? Oh my god. Everything's about her. Yeah, she came to her dream. Okay. <clears throat> I know. Oh, pancreatic cancer is just terrible. Oh my god. Oh, Ashley. Fucking hate cancer. Fucking hate cancer. Why can't they find a cure for this shit? The world. She'd love the unlovable. <laughs> I'm not unlovable. She did love Jesus and God so much. That she did. She was so proud of Dayton. <clears throat> she couldn't get over how much he, you know, loved God. And... Oh, my God, dude. She did make me a promise, though. She told me that as soon as she got up there, she was going to talk to God if there was a God. And... She was gonna wipe out cancer. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That was our deal. She was gonna make sure that my cancer never came back. Wow. Again. Oh my god, dude. She did fight a hell of a fight. Who owned three tanning salons? And she did. All right. I don't know if I could listen to this. And anymore. she held on as long as she could hold on. Yeah, Jonice believed in God, so I'm, yeah, I doubt she said if there is a God. She definitely went further than many people expected. Oh, my God. I was hoping she could hold out even longer. Hey, Carrot Top, I don't really fucking care what you think. Come in here under your regular account. I don't, I'm not worried about what people think I look up about or what I look like. I, I want to know what happened to Jonice. Jonice is a part of this community and I have every right to watch this. If Laura doesn't want people judging her, then she shouldn't be doing a fucking live stream on this. I really don't fucking care. I could feel bad for Jonice's family, which I do. Okay. But Laura putting this fucking show on is sickening. <clears throat> Right now, a half hour after she died. Come on, dude. You think that I look bad? For some reason, I had it in my head that, like, she could go in another year. I don't know why I thought that. It was so unrealistic. But I kept telling her, make it to the summer and I'm coming back. She's given. I have a right to find out what happened to this person. She's in a part of the community, and I was friendly with her before I fell out with Laura. So, bad emojis. <laughs> she was the emoji queen. Thanks, Peggy. Good old emoji queen. <laughs> I don't think I could ever look at an emoji and not see Tony's. <laughs> For those of you that didn't know, Jonice was the biggest emoji queen ever. Oh my god. Oh lord. She's go back into Laura's account. All her fucking troll friends are in here. Carrie Dew. Now we all know who her who's Laura's friends. 
to write like before emojis were a thing. <laughs> she just used to like put like a million emojis. <laughs> it used to piss people off so much. <laughs> Tawanda knows what I'm talking about. So you whistle down. <laughs> She used to go into people's chats and just... Yeah, exactly. Find out if her family has a link for donations. Don't send a penny to Laura. Yeah, please. Put emojis everywhere. <laughs> she didn't know what every emoji meant. You're right. <laughs> okay, Kara Top, because you're in my head. You could go too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> She loved every emoji. She knew every emoji. And she was. Clearly, you don't give a fuck about Joni's either, Carrot Top. Because instead of being in here, instead of being in there uh, comforting your friend Laura, you're in here worrying about me. Okay? As the emoji queen. Uh, I love you, Joni's. I am so going to miss you. Haven't definitely got an angel. Yeah, I better not find out. I, she did in my chat, Remy. <clears throat> but I, it didn't make me mad. It made other people mad, not me. I used to laugh at her. Yes, Shannon, unfortunately. Uh, did they, Lindsay? I didn't even look. Yeah, 30 emojis. Shut your mouth. Last thing I want to hear is a damn dog bark. <laughs> you annoying mutt. I don't know why she's laughing so much. This giggling is weird. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, she's definitely in this chat from heaven. Yeah, she's probably too busy talking to God. I believe it was either colon cancer, rectal cancer, or colorectal cancer, whatever they call it. But I mean, this girl was so young. This is terrible. This is just so sad. Because I'm telling you guys, if anything ever happens to me, like, I don't want this kind of shit happening. <clears throat> she was an amazing person. There's no doubt about it. Sometimes people laugh as a coping mechanism. Mm. Yeah, you're right. She was one of the kindest, most loving, most... Do you think it's appropriate to be live? I mean, I see you making posts about tragedy pimps all the time. Do you think this is appropriate? Non-materialistic woman I have ever known in my entire life. Yeah, exactly, soldier. Anybody coming in here to berate us and MM for wishing Jonice's family well and her soul to rest in peace, there's something very wrong with you, yeah. She, her and I were polar opposites. Just polar opposites. That's true. And I think that's why they say opposites attract. Oh my God, dude. Tell and she used to sit on the panel and she'd be like, I love my trailer. I don't care what anyone says. I am damn proud of my... I don't know. I listened to this hoping to hear that she died, you know, uh, peacefully with her friends beside her or something. But instead, it's just about Laura and how Laura made her feel. And all this shit. Ay, ay, ay. I don't see anything with her sharing her story. I, I'm sorry you all feel different. Why aren't you over there, though, worrying about that? Why are you in here? Policing a bunch of grown adults on the Internet. Why don't you make like your name and stay silent, Angel? Okay? Why is Lori doing this? We know why. I'm going to turn her ass off because I can't listen to this shit anymore. It's disgusting. If you guys want to go <laughs> listen to her fucking sniffle uh, over there, feel, feel more than welcome to do so. I personally just can't take much more of it, okay? Because I'm going to say some things I'll regret. I am in there and came over here to tell you, well, thank you. Thank you for telling me about myself because I really fucking care. You are a disgusting human being. Yeah, okay. You think you're bothering me by saying that because I really don't fucking care. I think the disgusting human being is the one who's sitting up there half hour after she found out that her friend passed away and is sniffling and crying and making it all about herself. 
and and talking about I had a dream with her last night. <laughs> And she was in it. Come on, dude. Really? Really? And if you really fucking thought that, why don't you come in here under your own fucking name, you pussy-ass motherfuckers, okay? Come in here under your own fucking names on your own fucking accounts. Uh, Silent Angel, I guess you haven't been around really long, but Laura has done this to so many people that she's uh hasn't even been friendly with, okay? Got up here crying about people. Give me a fucking break. Come back under your real fucking name and tell me about myself. Here you go. You know what? Here's a link. Take it. Tell me about myself. Why aren't you over there grieving the loss instead of over here worrying about the fuck some strangers doing? Mm. Yeah, you ain't no pussy bitch. Come up and tell me about myself. Let's go. <clears throat> I can't listen to that shit anymore. Sorry. Sorry. Donations for Flowers Rose by flowers that Laura won't send. Or flowers that she'll send and then she'll uh she'll ask for a refund over. She'll call the company and complain so she gets the money back and gets to pocket it. You mean like that? Yeah. Tangle and silent angel since your pie hole has so much to say. Now they could only type they could only type in a chat. <laughs> they could only type in a chat. We've been around long enough to know Lord does this to everybody, every tragedy, every friend that passes away, and then she'll start taking up a collection for donations, and, you know, poor Jonice, what it should be about is is this poor woman who is very young and who's, who lost her life, unfortunately, to a horrible disease. That's what it should be about, but instead it becomes about Laura, so, and how much it's affected Laura. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, you notice Silent Angel fucking went silent? Do not give money to Laura for flowers. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like, I don't know how... Honestly, this is just my thing. If, if, if a family... You know, let the family take care of it. Unless they ask for help, I, I don't think that people should be, you know, taking up collections, donations, or anything like that. Let her family deal with it. And let her family take care of her, her arrangements and everything like that. I mean, she honestly should just send flowers if that's what she wants to do instead of asking other people if they could give money. Somebody already gave her money for flowers. Yeah, see? Ugh, gross. I can't. That's why I can't watch, dude. Because, like, dude, in all reality, you went there and met this girl one time in person. One time in person, okay? I mean, that's a little intrusive, a little intrusive. Is there a GoFundMe? I don't know. I don't know much. Yeah, you don't need to go up and, and talk with a person. That's so hurtful. Yeah, okay. Because you're a pussy. Laura lasts all the way to the bank. Yep. She's done this several times. When Tawanda, I can't even believe Tawanda's in there. Tawanda's a fucking idiot, if you ask me. Um, uh, Tawanda, Laura took up a collection when Tawanda's brother passed away. Okay, and then she, oops, forgot to give her $400 of the money. Whoops. So tell me how disgusting I am, because I'll tell you right now, I don't fucking sit up here and take collections for fucking nobody. Okay, never would. So, that's pretty gross. Yeah, they won't take a link because they don't want us to know who they are. That's why they won't take a link. It's probably fucking Tinker or some fucking, one of them fucking crazies from over there. Uh, it was actually, actually over 500. Yeah, you know what? It was actually shown. Yeah, Tawanda's back in there. Um, cause she's just a glutton for punishment at this point in time. I think Tawanda just loves, you know, I, I like Tawanda, but I'm sorry. I just call it how I see it. Tawanda really enjoys surrounding herself with toxic individuals like Tracy, like Laura. Um, she really is. She's a glutton for punishment, you know, which makes it. I you are <laughs> look at this shit. I you are all ignorant. Looks at your words, read them all gross. What the fuck are you trying to say, girl? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I are you are all ignorant. Do you know what ignorant means? Do I need to look it up for you? Because I will. I are you all you are all ignorant. I are you are what what does that even mean? Is that English? What are you trying to say? 
I love these fucking ignorant fucking assholes that come in here. I, I, I. I are you are all ignorant. Look at your words. Read them all gross. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Oh, Jesus. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, you could type, huh? Didn't you just say in the chat like five minutes ago, I could type. Yeah, looks like it. Anyway. Mm-mm-mm. Um, but yeah, so she took up money for, for this, uh, Tawanda's brother passing and then, you know, her and Tracy made a big deal about it and same way they're back in Diane's chat. They're just a glutton for punishment. You know, these people just don't learn lessons. They're, you know, they're like, oh, I got fucked over by this person. You know, I'm going to go back and get fucked over four more times, you know, until I learn my lesson. I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Again, dumbass bitch, I ain't no pussy. No, you're probably fucking fresh start because you can't spell and you can't punctuate. I don't fucking care if... Ooh, I'm disgusting you being for stream sniping. Oh my God, you're really hurting my feelings. You could go too. Go get another troll account. Bye. Um. Yeah, you, you can't even take a link. Fuck out of here. So anyway, um... Yeah, she's been known to do this. Uh, it's it's a pattern. Uh, mommy rambling, son died. Okay, and Laura takes up money to send flowers to the services from her and her purple community. Okay, this the flowers get sent somehow. Laura gets a picture of them, which is fucking weird. Like, how did she get a picture of the flowers? I don't know. I don't fucking know how she got a photograph of the flowers supposedly she did and so she called up the floral the home that did the floral arrangement the whatever the shop and she uh complained about it and got the money back and kept the money for herself so you know this is a typical uh this is a typical thing of laura to do you know this one's just a little different because laura claims she was so close with this person but you know she hasn't talked to her in days and had a dream that you know, she came to her, like, dude, like, come on, not for nothing, but if somebody's gonna, you know, pass away, right, and, and they're gonna come to some people in dreams, like, actually visitation dreams, they're, they're gonna go with their children, their family, their husband, like, their, their parents, whoever's still around, not Laura, not some fucking asshole on the internet, like, oh my god, she's so, like, sick, she really is, yeah, then Sarah passed away, Laura did that fucking same thing, I think she has, like, a playlist saved, for, like, people that pass, you know, where she just plays the same sad songs in the arms of the angel. You know, like, she, it's, it's like a, it's just gross, bro. I'm sorry. I just can't be, oh, it's just gross. It's fucking gross. Sorry. Yeah, she does like it. I mean, really, honestly, um, a, a, a community post just notifying people at this point in time probably would have been the appropriate thing to do, but... You know, she likes to make a, a whole Hollywood fucking show about it. It's disgusting. It's fucking gross. She really does. Mm -mm -mm. I care for her to 2019 when she passed. I was PO. Medical power of attorney was so hard because Grandma Reed, we did exactly, died exactly 30 days. Oh my God. No, she has all the sad songs, girl. Just going in the arms of the angel. I mean, every one of them. She played like four or five songs, the same fucking ones that she played when um Sarah passed. It's just, I, I'm sorry. Like, I've told you guys this before. I'm very, like, uh, old-fashioned or I don't know what, what you would even call it. Maybe conservative about when people pass. Like, I, like... I know it makes me uncomfortable. Like, people do this on Facebook all the time. They take pictures of, like, their loved ones, like, um, headstones and, and then put them on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that, you know? Like, those kind of things, I don't know. I, I just don't know because I always wonder to myself, this is a big part of, like, what I wonder. I wonder to myself, like, how would this person feel about this? For instance, when my dad passed away, my dad told my mom very specifically, and me, and my brother, that he did not want anybody to see him when he died. He didn't want anybody to, you know, view him. He wanted a closed casket, okay? So before the funeral, my mom and my brother wanted to go in there and 
and and do the open casket thing. I went in the room with them, and then I heard my dad saying that in my head, and I left the room before the guy opened the casket because I was like, he didn't want that. Like, he, my dad didn't want anybody to see him laying in a casket. Very specifically, those were his words. And that included me and my mom and my brother. And so I I honored his words because I felt like, you know, he's going to strike me down if I don't honor his words. Like, that's just how I am about those kind of things. So, I don't know. I feel like this is just kind of, like, too much right now. Like, you know, I, I, I'm not saying to not notify people and let them know. Um, but the crying and all that maybe should be done in private because, you know, it's sad and, and respectfully her family is dealing with the tremendous loss, you know, and I would be like, if somebody, again, I know a lot of people follow Laura, do not have this, but it's called empathy. And I try to put myself in the shoes of the family. How would I feel if I knew that there was some stranger that I only met once on the internet sobbing and crying over this loss, you know, putting on this show? I would be very upset about it, okay? You got to remember when people's um, family members pass away, like, their emotions are fucking out of control, you know? they're in shock, they're angry, I mean, there's just so many emotions going on, like, I, I don't know, I just try to think of the family, and I don't know if this is an appropriate time to do these types of things, okay, and make a show out of it, and make a fucking spectacle out of it, you know, crying like that, yes, unfortunately, Kelsey Joni's passed this morning, I guess, and, oh god, it's just so sad, she's so young, and I, I can't stop thinking about her poor children, that's, not not just that they have to deal with losing their mom, but at that age, I don't even, I, I don't know exact the exact ages of her children, but I know that they're, you know, they're probably either at late elementary school or, like, early teens, because she's so young herself. I think she's only, like, what, 35-ish, 36, maybe? Um... You know, like, as adults, we could understand that you don't want to watch somebody suffering anymore. And, you know, you could kind of make some type of peace with it. But as a child, I just don't think that children have that same comprehension. You know, like, you need your mom. Oh, my God. I just can't even think about it. It makes me so sad to think about a little girl or boy needing their mommy and, like, not having her there. Like, I... That absolutely fucking breaks my heart to think about that. Mm. My God. Oh, God. Yeah, far too young. Far too young. Is it, and see, it's things like this that, you know, do make you question, like, is there a God? Because, like, why would a girl this young lose her life? It's so sad. Oh, God, it's so sad. It does anger me. It does. I didn't know Jonice all that well because she first came around when I was friendly with Laura. And then I, I remember her, you know, I, I'm i just being dead honest. I thought she was a troll when she first came into my chat um, because she was, I don't know. There's just sometimes when you're on here, like you, you, you don't know who's coming in your chat. And there's sometimes like people where like they're a little too friendly with you and trying to get your attention too much. And, and you wonder to yourself, like, is this, like, a asshole that's trying to, like, befriend me? Like, I don't know. It's just, you know, it just happens. Is real, in the reality, like, the internet's a scary place. You don't know who's hiding behind these profiles, you know? So, I wondered at first if she was a, a troll. And then, you know, I found out soon after that, no, she was just, like, a person. I don't really know where she came from because she kind of just popped up out of nowhere. And, um... You know, yes, she was known for the emo emojis, but she was always a very sweet person. I never had an issue with her, but, you know, once I fell out with Laura, as expected, you know, on the internet, people stopped coming into my chats and everything, but she was always very kind to me, and I was kind to her because I had no reason to not be kind to her, um, you know, and I had, I, I had conversations with her in chats and stuff, and she was always very kind, so... Um, I, I just feel terrible. I think about her family and that's just horrible. You know, her suffering's over, thank God, you know, but, um, uh, it's just terrible. You know, the death is hard, but it's the, it's the living that have to go on and deal with the, the, the grief and everything. And that's the hard part. That's the part that, you know, is sad to me. I mean, it's all sad, but. I don't know this for sure, but it seems like Laura is doing this for to profit. People are sending her super chats. I would be asking for money to go to directly to the family. 
I would have DM, DM, let me put that up there, girl, let me put that up there. She's getting quite a bit of money over there. Yeah, see, that's why I had to turn it off because you know what? I, 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 I know I'm going to say things that are just not, I'm, I'm not going to want to have on the internet. So I'll just shut up. I, I ha unlike Laura, I have self-control and I'll just turn it off and just not do that. But she should really not be taking money. She should have her super chats turned off. This is, it's pretty disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right there. That exactly right there is why she went live and, and is doing this right there. Oh, yeah, Vizina, it's terrible. Ugh, the, the bridge accident. What a horrible day, my God. Laura will run out and get another tattoo. Mm. She will be like, um, she will be like, yeah, you know, I'll buy flowers with this. And then she'll probably go and get the, uh, you know, cheapest bouquet of flowers that she could find and then, you know, complain about them so she could get her fucking money back. Did I not call this shit? That's why I also I don't want to watch this because I knew it was going to fucking happen here. I know, I know what's going to happen here. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, you know what? She went live, like, prior, knowing that she was going to talk about this, she should have turned her super chat button off. I don't even know how to do that, but... um. Doing that live for the same purposes. She's a money hungry bitch. Yeah, gross. I promise you guys, if anything ever happens to one of you guys, like, I, I would not do this. Like, this is honestly, I'd, I, I think the most I would, you know, do is just announce that, okay, you know, the, so people just knew why you weren't around anymore. I just, I don't know. I would never feel comfortable doing this shit. <sighs> Purloin just went to look at first thing I saw. Why does she need donations over this? Because she's sick. Mm -mm -mm. And the people that are donating to her are more sick. Why does Laura deserve money for her friend passing away? You know what I think it is? I think it's... You guys just, just saw it in here, right? A bunch of her fucking people logged in on their troll accounts, came in here, and they're like, you're disgusting! Because they're over-emotional fucking Karens. That's what I always say about a lot of the people in Laura's chat. And they're just like, you know, Laura's sad, and you're disgusting for judging her. But it's like, you know, these people probably don't know that Laura's done this for a long time. There's a lot of people in my chat that were good friends with Laura that were supporters of her that watched her doing this a bunch of times, you know, and they, they get it. They get it. Um, mm, she'll send a sparkling floral meme, you know, and, uh, and, and it's just fucking gross. And I think people just feel so bad that they want to help in some way because, you know, it's distressing to see somebody crying and sniffling like that. So they're like, oh, you know, what do I do? Let me give her money. You know, it's like, uh, you know, because she's purposely taking advantage of people's vulnerabilities because this is a very upsetting topic, okay? And people tend to get overly emotional about these types of things, and that's what they do. And she knows that. Exactly. She knows people get into their fields and they donate and, and to these types of things. Greedy and greasy. It's fucking gross, dude. My, Mega Master knows Jonis as well as Laura's trolls did. Yeah. Yeah. I was um, friends with Laura and friendly with Jonis when she first came around. <sighs> Hold your money at least. Uh, send it to the family. There was um there was a a uh, GoFundMe account at some point in time for her, and they were collecting money for her. I I don't exactly know why. Okay, um, but but yes, yeah, you know I don't know if that's closed. I don't know. You know I don't really don't. I don't know. I don't know. And if anybody in here would like to donate, you know I don't know. Please, uh, you know figure that out but please just don't give the money to somebody who's not even associated with her except for you know meeting her one time and talking to her over the internet that's just very uh intrusive just like she was very intrusive when the family wanted to make t-shirts and stuff to raise money and laura was you know putting their design down and and saying uh you know i'm gonna i i, I could have done that better I mean, oh my god, she's so gross. She's so gross. Oh my god. She's so fucking gross. 
She's so intrusive. You know, I was friends with Bam Bam, who recently passed away. And I, I needed to know, like, did she actually pass away? So the person who I asked, they sent me, um, they sent me a link to a, a, a wall, like a condolences thing, you know, where you could write something. And I started scrolling down it and I saw her daughter posting and her daughter is devastated. And, and I said, I, I, I'm sorry, I just can't leave a comment here. Like, I don't, I, I feel weird going into, you know, this space that her family is using to uh, grieve, you know, and like, you know, I'm a stranger. They don't even know who I am. I don't know. I just felt like it was weird and it was like not, it's not my place to like leave a comment there. I don't know. And and honestly, like, who am I leaving a comment for at the end of the day, you know? um, So I just decided against it. I read the comments and I started typing something and then I just said to myself, I really just don't want to post this because I feel kind of strange doing this, you know, on somebody's like wall for their family. I don't know. You know, I just felt weird about it. Her spirit is with her family, not you. Why don't Sub sends money to Jonice's family who really need it during this time? Yeah, I don't I don't know. She has she has ads on. Oh my god, dude. Hmm. <laughs> you know what the really sad thing is? We could sit here and say this as much as we want these people are just, they're not going to get it, dude, you know, until they see it for themselves. I, Cause there's, there's so many people that I know are intelligent human beings, you know, that were in her group and watched her do these very same things to other people. And they, you know, all of a sudden one day, I don't know what it was for each one. They woke up and they were like, I, she's a, fucking horrible person. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. Well, some people do, but most people, once they see it, they can't unsee it. You know, they're like, oh my God, like, what, how did I miss all of this? You know? Creating her baby is not visiting Laura to defend her unlovable ass. Oh my God, this is just terrible. I think Joni's tried to help her. What do you mean, Laura tried to help Laura? I, I, I absolutely believe she tried to help Laura, you know? Laura really didn't, you know, when she went there to go visit her, she didn't really stay there for uh, days, you know. She was there for a couple of hours. <laughs> I don't even know if it was a couple of hours. Mm -mm -mm. Well, anyway, I'm very sorry to hear that this happened because... Jonice was a very young woman and there, no matter what way you slice it, she had a lot of life left in her and her children are going to be devastated and her family and it's just horrible. This is just... <sighs> She's playing her interview. Oh my God, dude. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> when my brother passed last year, I took comfort in reading everyone's comments. I wanted to hear stories about him from people I didn't know. I wanted to hear every detail. I agree with that, Shannon. When my mom passed, like, a lot of people reached out to me that she worked with. And I knew my mom touched people's lives. Like, there was no question about that. Because she, you know, she would talk about, like, people, different people at work and what their struggles were. And, you know, she would give them advice and everything. But, like, it, it was so helpful to read all those things, you know, from people that I knew knew my mom. But, like, I, you know, when it comes to Bam's thing, I just didn't feel comfortable leaving anything on there. I don't know. I just felt strange for some reason. But, again, I have, like, weird... I don't know. I'm just kind of weird like that. I just try to, like, put myself in other people's shoes sometimes. And I'm like, ugh, I just don't know if this is a good idea. So. But, yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it's very helpful I used to be a Laura supporter, but when I finally went to other channels, and that's when I learned the truth about how vile she is. Laura is a good liar. Yeah, yeah, she is. I, I, it's hard for me to say yeah, but I think from I, I always have to try to think from the perspective of people that like didn't know her prior and might not know her history. If you were going into her chat and listening as a person who doesn't know, you know, all the fucked up shit that she's said and done here. I I could see how people could fall very easily for her bullshit, you know? I don't think she's as convincing as Tiffany is, 
But she's, you know, she's pretty convincing. She could be. And meal train, make sure we know no links Laura sets up. She can't be trusted. Yeah, I'm not sharing any links to anything, Sarah. Even if I, even if we do find them, I won't personally be sharing them because I just don't feel like it's my place to do so. I wasn't, like, close friends with Joni, so I didn't talk to her privately. Like, I personally wouldn't do that, but, you know, I, I, the warnings out there about, I mean, if you do want to give money to help the family out, anybody out here, please do not do so through somebody else on here. You know what I'm saying? Find a way to give it directly if you can. Um, <clears throat> that was me. I had no idea I fouled her because of a true crime case and had no clue about her. Wow. Yeah, see, like, I always have to think that people find her that way and then realize... Jeez. Uh, mm -mm -mm. No, I'm not posting links. That's not my place to do so. For the good. Just outspoken for the good. Who's that, ZZ? Oh, God. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. I need to send you some smoky quartz with the calendar to put next to your bed. <laughs> um, yeah. Please don't go over there. I mean, please don't give money to somebody. I mean, like, just the way she started the live off about the dream, dude. I'm like, Laura, what the fuck, dude? Like, really? Are we supposed to believe that 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 you you thought to yourself last night, oh, I have to reach out to her, and then you had a dream about reaching out to her. You don't remember the dream, but you knew you had one. And then all of a sudden, you got a phone call the next day. Come on, dude. Yeah, fuck cancer is right, ZZ. Especially when it hits super young people like that. You know, there's other people I know right now that are going through it, and my like, I I I get angry. When I hear it, and it's not because I'm I'm not angry about the person, you know, telling me. I'm angry because I'm like, I, I fucking don't understand why some why this is happening to somebody so young. Like, I just don't fucking understand it. And it's always the freaking nicest people, too. It's always the, the, the people with the biggest hearts, you know? Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. I need sun ASAP. I'm always fucking rain. Man, you guys in Cali have been getting hammered with rain, huh? I, um, I, uh, what do you call it? We got to, like, this time of year is always rainy for us. Leanna, are you seriously shitting on Laura for mourning the loss of her friend? No. Are you insane? No. Are you or so miserable in your life? No. Get a grip. Leave her alone right now. You're gross. Okay. Take your cankles. Get the fuck out of here. How about that? Okay? I don't care what you think. Do you, you haven't realized that yet? Why are you not over in Laura's chat listening to her and comforting her, though? Why are you worried about what I'm doing? All these people that keep coming in here, all you're doing is showing me about yourself. And and not really... I You don't know me. So, I, and I don't really care what you think about me. So... Sucks to be you. It doesn't matter which hat Jonis was in. If you say if you say we don't have a right to say this, sad. And to acknowledge that it's a loss uh, for this community, you need to check yourself. Um, you should probably come in and listen to what we were saying anyway, because nobody is even saying anything. I think Laura is disgusting for you know making a spectacle out of this and and collecting money um, because it's really just not her fucking place. And especially like on the day that the girl passes, like to be putting on this fucking show, um, and having, you know, your monetization up and your super chat button on, and we know, we've, we've seen this several times, I'll repeat it for all the fucking people in the back, because I know her little people are coming in here, um, Laura's done this several times where she's taken up collections and accepted money in the name of other people, and then, uh, the money either doesn't all go to where it's supposed to go, or she complains and gets her money returned, and then keeps it, so... Um, she finds a way to, you know, pocket cash off of all this shit. We've seen her do it about two or three times now. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think she's pretty gross. But uh, the mo bulk of the conversation has been about how sad the situation is with Jonice and her, her family passing. But if you think that's disgusting, well, that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. I don't really fucking care. Um, but I will always speak out when I see somebody taking advantage of grieving people. 
and, um, you know, the over-emotional Karens that choose to sit in Laura's chat and play into this bullshit, well, why don't you come in here and talk to the about 20 or 30 subscribers that were with Laura for years that no longer go in her chat anymore and ask, ask them what they think about what she's doing right now, okay? Yeah, Joni's is part of the community. We feel sorry for her loss, but Laura, who is who she was loyal to, has the money to make money off, has the nerve to make money off the pain of this loss. Yeah, it's pretty fucking gross. You know, Lori's grieving right now. She's sitting there giggling and laughing. Um, it's pretty gross, honestly, but that's why I turned her ass off because I'm just going to get angry. Very sad when anyone is taken by this wicked, dreadful disease. 100%. Please can't. They can't wait to go tell Laura about it. Yeah, they're going to be sending her screenshots, and then Laura will have more content, which is another reason why I fucking turned her ass off. Tawanda wanted to know who all donated for her brother. Laura had an oh crap moment. Yeah, Tawanda, that's right. Tawanda asked Laura for a list, okay, of um, donators so that she could personally thank each one of them. I can't believe she's back in Laura's chat, but again, I think Tawanda's just one of those people that's a glutton for punishment, like... I mean, I, to me, I would never talk to somebody in a situation like that after they did that shit. So Laura throws this whole live and she's like, you know, all the sad music again. We're collecting money for Tawanda. And Tawanda just wanted a list of people so that she could individually thank them. And when Laura gave her the list, Tawanda started adding the money up. Well, first, I think she had a fight to get the list or something, right? And then when she started adding the money up, and I have a screenshot of it, actually, I actually have a fucking screenshot somewhere because Tawanda had sent it to me or Tracy, one of them at the time had sent it to me. And, uh, you know, and I got, I got all, um, I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes, the receipts. So Laura forgot and I was friends with her, I think at the time. And I was like, oh, dude, this is so weird. You know, I was like, all right, maybe it was a mistake, you know, that she just miscounted the money because that happens. But, you know, now looking back, no, Laura didn't miscount the money. She just literally thought she could skim off the top, you know, just with Mommy Rambling's blog. Oh, let me send flowers. Oh, I, I'm going to complain about the floral arrangement. It wasn't done to my liking. I'm going to get a refund. And then you get a refund. And did you give the money back to the people that paid for it? Nope. You just kept that shit. <laughs> disgusting. If you think that I'm more disgusting for saying this, the truth, than she is for doing that shit, I don't want you in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stay the fuck over in, the, in her chat. Okay? Stay the fuck over there. Because that, to me, that's fucking gross. But, whatever. She just watched. She's going to talk about her haters and speak some nasty words in the same live she'll be talking about Jernice. Yeah, uh, of course. Because her... Do I win? I, Wait, went to every channel in the community for hours and hours crying about how Laura stole... Yeah, Tawanda. Went to every channel in the community for hours and hours crying about how Laura stole money from her. Uh, I'm telling you... Um, wow, look at who this person wrote. Look at who this fucking asshole just wrote. <laughs> this is Laura's people. <laughs> I don't... This is why, like, do you really think... Somebody is capable of saying something like this. Do you really think I care what you say or think about me? Look at this asshole. Thank you for showing your, your fucking ass and your cankles and your fucking vagina. No wonder this hard disease took both your parents. You're a rotten human being, Liana. This is unforgettable. Look at this fucking asshole. <laughs> no wonder this rotten... So my parents deserve to be punished for me? Like, what the fuck are you saying, dude? What a piece of shit. I'm going to post... Hold on a second. We're going to post this in my community page. Here's Laura's people. Look at this shit. What a fucking asshole. I'll post it right next to the uh, screenshot of... Hold on. That I took this morning of this person in my community page. This fucking asshole. I don't like you, but that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, I'd buy it in an instant. This person's bipolar, just to let you know. Okay, that was under my community post under the candle holder that I um, put on my community post yesterday. I mean, look at this asshole. They're like, I'm going to try to hurt make a mobster by bringing up her parents. Like, you're sick, dude. <laughs> what a sick fuck. Wow. Wow, that's a little fucking intense, but okay. <laughs> you're very upset that I'm telling the truth about Laura. Uh, hold on. 
me screenshot this. This is what Laura's people do. I love to fucking exploit these pieces of shit, so. And expose them. This is Laura's people. I mean, like, really? You really think I care what you think after saying something like that? Like, you're a sick fuck. I would never say that to somebody. I'm evil? Mm. You think I'm evil? Hold on a second. I gotta let the dog in. Let me, let me, um... Let me switch up. I, I, I came live today talking about a whole bunch of different fucking things. Like, $300 so far. That's great. Good for her. I'm sure she'll fucking keep at least half of it and donate more than half of it and donate 50 of it to something just so she doesn't look like a complete piece of shit. All right. Fucking tank glass. Bitch. Just another try. Yeah. Didn't Laura yell at just another troll the other day? Now she's here. Dude, there's a lot of mentally ill people on here, I've learned. Um, <laughs> you know, and a lot of them flock to Laura. I mean, they flock to a lot of different people. Oh, you want to go out? I thought you were outside. I was trying to get in. Go ahead, buddy. There's a lot of mentally ill people, clearly, on here. Um, I mean, that's that's just not normal. If you were sobbing from a loss, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be in another stream making up drama. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> you know, but I wouldn't be sobbing. I don't know. I'm not like the type of person that likes to cry in front of people. I, my crying is usually done in my, you know, solemn, lone, lonesome time. I don't know. Solemn? Is that even a word? I don't know. I'm not like the type of person to cry in front of people. I'm always like the type of person that's trying to hold it together so that everybody else doesn't lose their shit so um and then you know i have my own private breakdowns when i you know when i have to uh but uh i just like i just i would never i just can never imagine myself going on a stream like while i'm crying like i just i don't know i can never fire a live up while i'm crying yeah who says that to others the people that enjoy laura that too. <laughs> the people that enjoy scammers. Just another troll will eventually like I I don't know this person, but from some of the shit that they say, I suspect they haven't really been around very long. Oh yeah, that's right. With Kim too. Holy shit, dude. Forgot about that. Thank you, Life Reminder. See, you guys remember more shit than I do about this. I mean, that's right. That's right. Loris steals. Look what Laura did to Kim with the money she collected. She brought her jewelry that was less than $200. That's right. Laura collected money to buy Kim a Pandora bracelet. Another person who unfortunately lost their life. Yep. And, and she, oh my God, she kept some of that too. That's right. Her pronounced me made $300 for cancer. Yeah. I want to see those receipts. Because guess what? There's no way, there's no way, Laura, I'll tell you right now why she's not going to give $300 to cancer. Because that means that 40% of that $300 or 35% is going to have to come out of Laura's pocket. Because when, when you get $300 worth of Super Chat donations, you don't get to keep all $300 of that. 30, I think it's 35. I don't know. I can never get a clear answer. So it's anywhere from 35 to 40% of that goes right to fucking YouTube. So all these idiots are donating to YouTube right now, not even knowing it probably. Okay. And, and I'm not saying you're an idiot if you super chat, but I'm just saying like, if you want money to go to help <laughs> cancer out, give it to cancer, give it to a cancer foundation. There's many out there. Okay. Not to some asshole or to some big corporation that's going to skim 35% off the top of it. Flowers for Merb. Yep, the money she pulled in with CPS calls. Mm. But you know what's funny? Laura's the first one, and I hope her fucking asshole people are listening right now. Because Laura's the first one that when other people are in need, okay? She's the first one to call people out. When Alicia was in need... Okay, because she got diagnosed with cancer. Laura was up on her live stream ripping her fucking, uh, you know, list apart. 
ripping her GoFundMe or whatever the fuck she had up there apart. Okay? She does it to Queen B. She does it to everybody. But God forbid you fucking say it. Especially, the, the one thing I can say, is at least when those people are collecting money, it was for themselves or whatever. Not, not in the name of people that passed away here that you never even fucking met in person. That's right. Being there, that was another person she shit on. How about Marsha White Sharky? Okay. Marsha White Sharky comes into her chat one day who was sick. And I haven't seen Marsha shot. I hope she's okay. She's out there somewhere. I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, Marsha was very sick and she came in and Laura goes, aren't you? Oh, Marsha White Sharky, aren't you dead yet? And she said this, something very similar to my friend Purple Rain. Aren't you dying? No empathy, okay? Somebody who is capable of saying shit like that to people, that those are people that don't have fucking empathy. So you want me to believe now that when somebody actually does pass away, you want me to believe they're crying? Come on, dude. Because I learned to stop saying shit like that when I was a kid, okay? Because everybody here has said something mean that they regret, that they that was horrible. Everybody here has said it. I don't fucking care who you are. At some point in your life, you said something fucking horrible to somebody, okay? But most people, most people, as they age and learn and realize how much power their words have towards people, and they try not to do that. Like this sick fuck on the, on the screen. Clearly never fucking learned. <laughs> Uh, half hour and she goes live. You know, not for nothing, like, to me, <laughs> I hate that there's two pictures of me on the fucking screen right now. To me, go in your Discord and talk to your friends, you know, while you're crying and shit. If you need comfort. Yeah, it's all about me, 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 me. <laughs> you need to make me a better person. No, she didn't. She might have tried to, but it didn't fucking work, Laura, clearly. She made me want to do better. The truth believed that on you yesterday in her life. Blamed what on me? What? What did she blame on me? Me? Fuck Tracy. Just another troll is just... It's just that, just another worthless fuck. The nerve, the fucking nerve to say what she said. Yeah, evil demon just like that bitch, yeah. We all done, said things before. Laura has no issues if you live in a trailer yet. Her friend lives and loves her trailer. How pathetic you are, Laura. Wait, what? Tawanda wrote she had no, wait, had no insurance and had to beg for help. What do you mean? Are you dead yet? Comment. She said, you and Laura said it. I never said that to Marsha White Sharky, dude. I don't know where she got that from. I did not say that to Marsha White Sharky. Laura said it. I just heard the clip of it the other day. Uh, I wasn't even on her panel. And I know Tiffany said some fucked up shit to her, too. I don't know, dude. Tracy's fucking senile, so, you know, I'll give her a pass because she, I, I, she's so fucking senile she can't remember. Let me just say, if this was right to be doing right now, every one of those people that's in that group that's friends with that girl would be firing up live streams right now. Laura had to beat everybody to the punch, right? Perp said she had insurance. Who had insurance? I'm getting confused. Mm-mm-mm. God, man. I never said that. That's why you don't remember me saying it. I would never say something like that to somebody. Find the fucking clip of it, Tracy. Go get the clip of me saying that. Aren't you dead yet? Never fucking say that to somebody. One thing I remember when I was friends with Tiffany, she used to say this shit to like people all the time. And like, I wouldn't say something like this unless I fucking really meant it to somebody. Like you would have to have hurt me very deeply for me to say this to you. You know, like, you know, you're dead to me. She would say that about people all the time. 
And I remember when we stopped talking, we were, I was talking about this with somebody because I was like, it always made me feel uncomfortable like saying that to strangers on the internet. So I, I literally went to my phone and searched in my text messages, dead to me. And dude, about like 10 texts from Tiffany talking about other people. This one's dead to me. This one's dead to me. That one's dead to me. Oh, I think it was because Tiffany called Laura out for saying it. And I was like, who the fuck is this bitch talking about? She says that shit all the time. And I looked and it was her, you know, I had like 10 text messages of her saying that. And I was like, dude, like, why would you say that? I don't know. These people get so overly emotional about like words on the internet. I just can't wrap my head around it. Yes. Laura had to be the first to tell everyone about Sarah. Yes. When she passed and Laura was rotten to her. Hi, everyone. Hi. I, I, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Alicia has made some pretty rogue comments as well. I don't recall many bad comments you have said. Yeah, Alicia, but you know what? Alicia, like, owns this shit. Like, I mean, she, you know, she'll own that shit. And, and I know Alicia, she at least tries to curb it sometimes. Like, I, Laura just doesn't, you know? She's just vicious and, and nasty. I was watching this video yesterday with that BS girl. And, like, Tiffany brought up this girl's child's R, okay? Because, like, Again, just because the girl makes videos about her and like criticizes her behavior on here, Tiffany has to go that far. She has to go to this girl. Like, there's just no filter. I, you know, have I fucked up in in my life? Yeah, and said you know nasty shit to people as an adult. Of course, you know there there's moments where I get really angry, but like these people just don't ever stop doing it. And then every time they do, there's always an excuse for it. There's always an excuse. Well, I was angry. <clears throat> you suck at selling candles. Does she have her um candle link scrolling across the bottom of the screen? Here it is. A memorial plaque written perp says or said flowers. Yeah, she's going to send a fucking uh, $60 edible arrangement and then keep the rest of the money. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> There's so many vultures on this platform. It's disgusting. I, I, like, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm just like, what is wrong with these people? Yeah, exactly. Alicia goes live about 100 hours a year. Perp goes live about 100 a week. Not really comparable. It's very true. Laura always seems happy to have a bad rep on social media. She seemed indifferent to the criticisms. I don't know. What do you mean? Indifferent. She, she's, yeah, she's, she acts like she's not okay with it, but she kind of is. I mean, cause you know, eventually you would think someone would change their behavior and be like, oh my God, I don't want people to think I'm a piece of shit. You know, <laughs> like eventually you would think so, but she just doesn't do that. Double vulture. Oh my God. I'm glad I'm not watching this because I, I would make a fool of myself. Laura makes herself the victim, even in her friend's death. Her friend died. Her friend is gone. She lost a friend. Her, her, her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know how actually close they were. That's, that's the thing. Like that, that girl, Kimberly Michalski thinks she's really close with Laura too. And I just, I don't know. I've heard Laura when, when it comes to Junie's like she'll be like oh I haven't talked to her in a really long time or I haven't talked to her in a couple of weeks and I'm like I don't know I mean are you really that close now Laura's talking about how she did everything she could for her was a good friend to Jodie's yeah it is all about Laura almost proud I don't watch her yeah she might be uh I mean, I don't know, everything you could do, Laura, like, I've heard her say that, I've heard her say that in live streams where she's like, oh, I go above and beyond for my friends, and I'm like, all right, Laura, like, that's a little dramatic, dude. It's also not true, but, I don't know, I'm just thinking of Jodice's family, and I'm like, I don't know, how would you feel? That's a thing that escapes some people on the internet, I guess, <laughs> when they, they're like, how would you feel if somebody was doing this? Like, I, I would, I don't know, I couldn't even write a comment in a fucking, uh, whatever you call those things, memorial books, because I was 
like too nervous that the family, it would upset the family. And there was somebody that I knew for 13 years on here and I still couldn't do it. Couldn't bring myself to do it. No, not 13 years. Sorry. Since 2013. Well, almost 10 years. I still couldn't bring myself to do it. But they're going to be like, who the hell is this person? You know, I don't know if their kids would know me. This is my wife. I'd be infuriated. And I wouldn't be too happy if it was a family member of, of mine. That's for sure. I'd be, it's like, dude, I don't know. I just, I don't think I'd be too happy about that. I know Kim is, Kim is laid off super chatting and being present in her streams. Who, Kim Michalski? No, she was just in there the other day. I saw her in there. I just saw her in there the other day. What? Doesn't want her husband to stay single. Hope she finds someone. Why are you even thinking of that right now? What the fuck? Some of the things she even came on here and publicly admitted to saying to this woman as she was dealing with her illness and her, you know, her whole situation. I was like, dude, like, who would say that to somebody in that situation? I don't know. I, she just doesn't know how to handle sensitive situations. Sometimes, like... Sometimes you don't even, there, you don't need to say much, you know, sometimes it's just being present that helps comfort people. You, you guys know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to like, you know, be the fucking preacher. Okay. You could just be there for somebody and, and comfort them just simply by being there and giving them a hug or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Letting them know that you're there if they need anything. And that's enough. That's more than enough sometimes, you know? I know for me it was when I was grieving, you know, that's all you need sometimes just for like somebody to nod because, you know, there's stages of grief that like people don't even think about. But like when, when somebody first passes away, right, you're like, you know, you're kind of like caught up in the whole moment and the, the, the funeral and everybody's there. And then like a, a couple of weeks later, the, the support just dies off. You know, people go back to living their lives and you're left there alone, basically, to deal with your feelings like I mean, I've talked to so many people about this in my personal life and on here where it's just like, you know, your family, like, it's almost like you're just left alone. And it's like, nobody, you feel like the world, I always explain, I don't remember what video it was. There was a, a music video where, um, I feel like it's like Phil Collins for some reason, but I might be wrong. I don't know. He's standing in like a, a busy train station or something and there's just people moving really fast around him while he's like standing there and I'm like that's what I felt like when I was grieving it's like the only thing I can compare it to because you feel like everybody else is moving on with their lives and going you know doing what they have to do and like you're just kind of stuck in this like place where you just don't you can't move you know you're just kind of stuck in this place it's like that's the part when it gets so hard, you know, because you're like, oh, my God, like, I have to deal with this by myself. It's like, you know, I have to deal with it. And everybody else is kind of just going on because it's not affecting them the same way as it's affecting me, you know, clearly. And uh, that's a fucking lonely feeling to be alone with that, you know. Yeah, to find out like that. Oh, I didn't even think of that life we wanted to do. So right. What if some of her family members and personal friends don't know? Ay, ay, ay. Whether her husband moves on or not is not appropriate to discuss. No, I, I don't even know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, my God. Just end the stream, Laura. You're running out of things to say. End it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? End the stream already. Abort mission, Laura. Like, come on. Just end it. If you're talking about her husband moving on, just uh, end the stream, dude. It's not, it's, you're done, dude. You, your goose is cooked. Oh my God, that's so uncomfortable. She bothers that man with a stupid baby voice. Oh my God. Mm. 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 God. 
And it's just like, you know what kills me? You got all these over emotional people in her chat that are sitting there and they're like, Laura's grieving. She's like, you know, and they're just not listening. They hear crying, but they're not actually listening to what's being said. And I'm not saying that Laura's not upset. I'm not saying that she's not upset. I'm just saying that I just think that she's not as upset as she would want people to believe. <laughs> I'm sure she's sad, but like, I don't know, man. You met this person for a half hour, Laura. And I don't think they spent all that much time on the phone together. Laura has her certain people that she likes to talk to on a regular basis because whoever is willing to, like, engage in the conversation and, you know, make it about her and help her in some way, then she's, you know, she's going to spend more time on the phone with those people than the people that are just having regular conversations with her. That's why when you see the people defending her in the chat sometimes that don't know her, like, behind the scenes, like Yarnfield crew, because Yarn, Yarn's not in her groups. She's not in her Discord. You just, like, dude, like, I, I mean, I'm not just saying this to say it. Like, I actually was friends with this person and spoke to them for hours and hours and hours and hours on the phone behind the scenes. And trust me, you know, like... Yeah, she likes yes people. Oh, just another troll is the same person that said my son's car accident was my karma. Yeah, that person's just fucking evil. It's probably Corey. Because I really don't know anybody as vile as Corey is. And I know Corey's sitting in Laura's chat. And I bet you if you sat there and lined it up, well, Corey probably has like 20 devices that she trolls from. So who knows? But people say, call me if you need anything after you suffer or less, but we won't. So call them. That's my wish for those grieving that their friends keep calling. Oh, me too, Bfergs. That's like the hardest part, honestly. There was a few people in my life that I'm very thankful for that kept in contact with me on a regular basis. Like, you know, it dwindled down now. It's seven years later. I don't expect them to be here for me, you know. I, you know, but like within the year, like the first two years of my mom's loss, like my mom's cousin kept in touch with me, made sure she reached out to me all the time. Like she really helped me, you know, and my cousin Nico, I mean, her and I talked like daily every day, you know, and, and honestly, like she spent so much of her time comforting me. I just like, I can, I, I can never repay her. There, there's no way I could ever repay her. The only way I could ever repay her is being there for her when, you know, her parents unfortunately passed thank god they're still here and they're in great health oh my god my uncle <laughs> i gotta say man my uncle he got my grandmother's jeans because this guy is fucking 70 something years old and he's ripped ripped he looks like like he looks like his body like looks like a, a fucking like 30 year old like i cannot believe how ripped my uncle is he's in great shape and uh he takes very good care of himself still does like karate and shit like he's crazy but um you know so hopefully they ain't going anywhere anytime soon they're in great health and my aunt's just gorgeous i mean who says things who says such things who who does yeah laura or or Corey. i mean really there, i'm not saying that there's not possibly some random person that's just fucking evil out there there very well could be but Corey absolutely hates Alicia and she absolutely hates me. And it just, you know, it just makes sense. Oh, speaking of fucking people, I hate, absolutely hate me and hate Alicia. This shit was funny. Hold on. I got to get back on my, my thing here. Let me get back on my, my uh, computer. No, that's what I'm, oh, hold on. I'm echoing in my own ear. Bye bye. All right, let me send this to myself. Um, I hate even giving this asshole attention, but I thought this was a pretty funny comment. This person's really off the rocker, and again, very, very coarse. My coarse. I also done a lot of lore too. So, yes, plain Jean. Yes, yes, yes. Always, always. Be very down. Look if he checked on me even when I went into total hermit mode. I understand when people go into hermit mode too. 
I try so hard to check in, even if it's like, okay, a couple weeks have gone by. If I haven't heard from you, I'll try to check in because I'm like, but I also don't want to bother people because I know that I isolated a lot too. When I was, um, when I was grieving, I was an isolator for sure. I think a lot of people do that. Hermit mode. Uh, yeah, it's a great way to explain it. And you just kind of don't feel like talking to people. So sometimes I feel like I don't want to bother people. You know, it's, it's, look, even though I've been through it, I still have trouble, like, helping other people through it because I, I don't know, everybody's different, you know, and I, I know what I wanted. I appreciated when people reached out to me, even if it was just to say hi or check up, um, because a lot of people didn't, you know, um, that I thought would, and a lot of people you know, a lot of people did, though, but the, the people that were there for me the most, obviously, besides my husband, because he was another person that was, I don't know, I've talked to other women, and they'll be like, you know, my husband doesn't understand, or, I mean, my husband has the patience of a fucking saint, he really does, I, I really, I'm lucky, like, in that sense, I'm lucky in a lot of senses with my husband, but I'm just saying, he's, he's got the patience of a saint, like, he gave me as much time as I needed to, to go through what I had to go through, you know, and he was very patient with me where I, I didn't realize like, that's not the norm for a lot of people. A lot of people's husbands are like, you know, you need to get over this and you need to like get out of bed and take a shower. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like pushing them and not understanding that like, dude, this shit could go on for a year or two where you're depressed, you know, or more maybe, you know? So, I mean, my husband was very patient with me. Never once did he like try to force me to not be sad or, and then it was probably a lot for him to deal with. I do remember him at one point in time saying that I'm never going to be the same. And he's, he was right, you know, but he never pushed me or, um, made me feel guilty. Although I just had my own guilt, but he never made me feel guilty ever about it ever. Um, all right, hold on a second here. So this asshole, of course, shows up because they cannot fucking wait for B Prefergs or somebody to post something so they can talk shit about me or whatever. So they write this, they write this comment. They're going back and forth with B Fergs in her fucking community post section. It's so stupid. And uh and this comment was really funny. Um oh, I didn't even notice it. I didn't even read the second one that they made, they said to me. I read this one. I thought this one was pretty funny. Uh, me and B for obviously, if this asshole shows up, we're like, oh my God, look what this fucking crazy asshole wrote. You know, we'll share it with each other like via text. So this is what they wrote. This is fucking great. I knew you'd be here laughing my ass off. You're so predictable. No punctuation. Like, just like fresh start. It's the same person. You're a psychopath. And I'm so confident in that. Okay. I will continue proving it with your own actions. I'm like, you've proven absolutely nothing except for that you're fucking crazy, but okay. Like, I, I do you think I care that you think I'm a psychopath? Like, cool, whatever. Look at Alicia. <laughs> this is the funny part. Look at Alicia and how much better off she is mentally without your toxic, out-of-control anger, jealousy, and greed spewing in her ear, forcing people to see things in the evil way you do. <laughs> what like that's so fucking weird first of all what do you mean look how how much better of alicia is uh you must have like missed because they left this i don't know i think yesterday or something and i'm like alicia was in my chat like what the fuck are you talking about I, i'm like what like what are you talking about alicia's better off like like, like, the way they're writing this is they seem to think that me and Alicia aren't friends anymore i don't know i don't know what the fuck they think but you know again like me and Alicia talk outside of YouTube. We text all the time with each other. Like, oh my god, dude. This is so weird. Um, all right, anyway. And she was just in here earlier. Uh, yeah, and I for how the fuck do I force people on the internet to see things the way that I like see? How would you how would you even go about doing that? Oh, just Angel, this is Burgundy Blues, aka Fresh Start, aka the wrong one. It's the same person. Oh, but shit gets really weird. Wait a second. I need to open up. Hold on a second. This is where it gets weird. This person's fucking sick, dude. Uh, hold on now. Let me finish reading this first. Where did my pictures go? Ah, I lost it. Fuck. What did I just press? All right. 
So I'm forcing people to see things. Like, how would I even do that on the internet? How do you force somebody to see things the way that I that I see them? Like, nobody here has to be here. You know what I'm saying? I would say if anybody tries to force people, it's like somebody like Laura, where it's like she doesn't allow differing opinions ever in her chat, you know? I mean, I, I don't know. I try to, like, allow everybody to come in here and have an opinion. All right. So anyway, then they go. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Forcing Alicia. Your subs lives revolve around covering up your crazy. I'm like, really, dude? You That's a little dramatic, but OK. Like, how are how are people covering up my crazy? Like, OK. You don't owe other people's comments. You don't own other people's comment sections and you can't dictate what I say, which I wasn't trying to do at all. I don't even know why they're saying that. Uh, you're trying to insult me by projecting your crazy, like in all caps, onto me. You tell on yourself constantly and your history is just as dangerous as you say it is. I'm like, what? I don't even know what that means. You're the one on a smear campaign with everyone. Now, this asshole, I just had to explain. They don't understand what a smear campaign is, okay? Simply talking about another person and telling the truth about them, that is not a smear campaign. A smear campaign is when you fucking lie about somebody, that's what a smear campaign is. When you come and lie, you start saying, you know, you break up with your boyfriend and then you start going around telling people that he beat you and he was abusive and, you know, he's uh, steals money and he's a drug addict. And none of those things are true. None of those things are the exact opposite of the truth. OK, that's a smear campaign. When you're just, you know, doing commentary on somebody and telling the truth about them, that that's not a smear campaign, you fucking idiot. So I can't smear somebody with the truth. I mean, I, I guess you can, but I, you know, when you're just telling the truth about somebody else and you have proof to back it up, that's, that's not a smear campaign. So you should probably fucking learn what a smear campaign campaign is. But anyway, this one, this part was really, <laughs> this one was my favorite. Ready? <laughs> oh my God. This part was great. I'm sure b gets the silent treatment until you need her again. You're crazy as obvious. And I'm not hiding anything. I'm not ashamed to be doing this, laughing my ass off. If you don't like it, that's too bad. You're a psychopath. You're not supposed to. <laughs> like, I really don't care what you do. You think that you're actually, like, nobody listens to this asshole? The only person that fucking listens to this asshole is Laura. And that's about it. So, yeah, you're really proving something here. Like, you really think, like, oh, my God, you're really brainwashing people. I mean, you're really affecting my life, okay? Be burgundy blues. But wait, because it gets better. Hold on. Let me go to B-Frag's page. They're like, you're here. You're so predictable. I'm like, all right there, uh, fucking Miss Cleo. Like, where would you like me to send your award? Yeah, of course I'm here. Me and B-Frag's are friends. And we think that your comments are so utterly ridiculous you know, and funny and entertaining that, yeah, of course I'm here. We love to fucking clown on your ass. Yeah, of course I am. Why wouldn't I be there? You know, be friends with my friend. You're talking shit to her. Why wouldn't I fucking be there to help her out? She would do the same for me, you know? I mean, me and be friends have been friends for like, I don't even know how many years now, be friends, like uh, five, maybe? Yeah, we let your crazy hang all the way out over here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We've been friends for so many years that, you know, this person, I don't know. It's like this weird thing. I think they're very bothered by the fact that me and Beefers are good friends. And I think that they, or me and Lelisha, you know, whoever I'm close with, they're like very bothered that I can maintain friendships. So like they, they think that they're going to come in here and like, uh, fucking <clears throat> get people, you know, get like Beefers paranoid about me. Like. Yeah, like giving giving B for the silent treatment. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Giving B for the silent treatment. <laughs> like what? I mean, like when they could clearly see B for this in my comment section every day. Like, I don't know. How do they think that I'm giving her the silent not every day, but yeah. You know? This is where the shit gets weird. Hold on a second. I don't know. I just I really enjoy reading these because I'm like, this person like whoever this is, right? Hey, there's my hands. Whoever this is, they're so fucking warped, dude. Like, the things that they say, I'm like, I, I just can't. Holy shit, this dog. Hold on. I gotta let the dog out again. Hold on. He's like, I, I spoiled him. With letting him sit on the porch.
Oh my god. I every time the dog does this, I hear my dad because my dad used to sit right in my kitchen next to my back door, and the dogs and he'd be like in out in out to the dogs all the time. So every time Ovi is wants to go in or out, I hear my dad and oh shit, I hear my dad in my head going in out. By the way, here's a little trick because a lot of people don't know this. If you look, it says twenty five comments. And, and it's like, what? Where's the comments? You go to sort by on the phone. I, think it, I don't know if it says sort by, but it probably says, it has the dots or something or the lines. Go to newest first and then look. I don't know why. The fuck? I don't know why YouTube. Uh, I'm like out of breath because I just ran up and down the stairs. God, I'm getting old. Uh, I don't know why YouTube does this. Like, because it's, I don't know. I don't know why. It, like, moderates comments into the newest first. It's the weirdest thing. Okay, so they write to me first. Why don't you release your private messages laughing my ass off? How, who's this sound like? All right, the same fucking way that Fresh Start wrote. Laughing my ass off. Laughing my fucking ass off. They just left the fucking out. Uh, all right. <laughs> I can bet you're covering up much worse. Like, dude, this person's so fucking paranoid. It's, it's weird. Be honest with yourself. For once, or no one will ever believe you. It's you that has no empathy. <laughs> like, okay, dude. Uh, if you only knew. If you only knew. All right, so then b just writes back, Are you mental because you sound like it? Why should I release my private messages? I'm not the one lying about using S for sympathy. Suicide, I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, because this isn't fucking, this stream isn't monetized anyway. Uh, for the drama Laura created became too much for her. Go babble somewhere else, weirdo. And she shared a video. I don't know. This was Laura's video where the clip is of her saying about the fake S and a whole bunch of other shit that she said that she denies saying. Um, so they write back. This was private and not carried out. And years ago, dude, this person doesn't understand. It doesn't matter that it happened in a private conversation. That's not the fucking problem. The problem is that a normal fucking human being wouldn't be like, hold on a second, let me see what the dog's barking at. Oh, now he stops. Okay. Probably a cat. He has like different barks for different things. And that bark sounded like somebody was like, uh, here or a cat. All right. So he's still going now. It's definitely a cat or a dog's. Um, all right, so, hold on a second. I'm going to find your own meltdown. Frenzy, respect way more. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to find my my spot. Oh, it doesn't matter that Laura did this, said this in private. It's the thought that she would even fucking do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, a normal, like, to handle, like, YouTube bullshit. An, an obvious solution to Laura's problem would have just been logging off YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Just log the fuck off YouTube, Laura. If, if you can't handle people, you know, criticizing you and everything, that would have been the normal response. But she literally came up with this plan, you know, this plan of like, and wanted to drag her child into it. That, that's what, that's the problem. It doesn't matter where it was said. It's the fact that it was said. Because like a normal person wouldn't be like, I'm going to pretend I killed myself. And then, you know, to get back at a bunch of fucking strangers that you'll never meet on the Internet. Like, who the fuck thinks like that? That's insane. Just log off, dude. I would leave the Internet before I would ever fucking say anything like that. Anyway, uh, so obviously she wasn't looking for attention, but you are right now. <laughs> like, OK, mental is your entire life revolving around like, again, because you leave comments on the internet, it's, I mean, it might be this person's entire life, but like, no, you know, leaving a comment that takes two seconds to write on the internet or being online, that, that does, that's not your whole life. You know, there's 24 hours in a day, but you know, everything's everybody's whole life. That's why I feel like they sound like Laura because Laura thinks the same way. She thinks if you leave a comment somewhere, it means you spend your whole life. It means when you log off of YouTube, you're, you're thinking about Laura. You know, you're eating dinner, you're thinking about Laura. You're fucking taking a shower, you're thinking about Laura. You're sleeping, you're dreaming about Laura. You know, like your whole life revolves around her. You're on vacation with your family, you're thinking about Laura. That's what they think. It's it's so fucking bizarre. Because um, who thinks about the same thing all day? Anybody, uh, anywhere. It just doesn't even make sense. Um, 
All right, so anyway, you expect way more out of someone you've never met before and will never meet laughing my ass off. Like, all this person likes to do is fight with people in comment sections on here. Like, that's all they like to do. I've never seen them, like, comment anything positive. And I noticed that they're never in Laura's chats, ever. I love that you're using someone who covers up worse for Natasha Cooper, the biggest scammer that's mental laughing my ass off. Your stuff will come out just like Laura's. Everyone always does. Like, all right, dude. Uh, like the word obsession, your definition of mental is the... Com and look, b Frags doesn't even respond, and they're like, they, they're still talking to her. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, dude. I know, I don't even watch Natasha. Oh, yeah, they love when b Frags posts. Mm. Okay. b Frags, like the word like the word obsession, your definition of mental is the complete os opposite of what's in the DSM. Now... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Fresh Start used to use the DSM all the time, too. The DSM, the DSM. Like, they probably never even read anything from the DSM, but they're, you know, they're an expert on it. Um, your words don't offend me. Your reality is insanity for real. Okay. <laughs> so Beaver appropriately responds with blah, 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 blah. They write this. This is who thinks she's entitled to be judging and harassing everyone. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, so b writes, I'm not going to argue with someone who clearly has mental issues. Go stalk someone else's comments. Your judgment and peer... Now, I feel like this was them still writing, you know, and they didn't see b response yet. Your judgment and point of view on life is mental. Like, because they know that. They know her point of view on life, right? Uh, you're drowning in mental in illness. Like, this person really thinks saying this to somebody, they're going to be like, oh my god. This random troll on the internet told me I'm mentally ill. I better go seek help. You know, let me go get on some medication. Like, it's so stupid. Your friends and subs are mentally ill. Again, you're insulting them and yourself, not me. Mm, you don't seem bothered at all. There's no comments here to stalk. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, dude. They take everything very literally. Very literally. Hold on. Um, and they just really enjoy fighting with people. Like, I don't go into other people's comment sections to fight with them. Like, this is not normal. They do this all the time. This is, like, just one of millions of comments, you know? They love arguing with people. They they sound a lot like Laura. There was a comment from, like, a couple of days ago. I was away. And I was like, dude, this is Laura. They were using the same words as her. Like, your mentality is, is you know, this. It, it really does. They use all of Laura's you know, little buzzwords. And, like, their vocabulary is just as limited as hers are. All right, so they, so then they write, uh, you cry about how Laura responds, like, who's crying, and then use the same responses incorrectly for a lot less. Like, what? What does that even mean? It's hilarious. That's why there's less people in your squad of lunatics. Like, oh, oh no. Oh, no. I never called you the R word. Go have a nap. Where'd they say that? That's why I was like, when I was reading this, I didn't, I didn't. Did they say that? Or I don't know. They sound like a cross between Laura and Corey. Yeah, they really do. Uh, you wasted. All right. All right. So then they write, you wasted five years trying to prove you're better than someone you despise. So that's a question, I guess. I don't know. Congratulations. You haven't proved anything. You hide your true character. That actually proves you're much worse. But you already know that. That's why YouTube's your punching bag. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Could you imagine wasting your time writing this shit? Like, I just... I, this is so stupid. It just doesn't even mean anything. Like, what do you... like? There, It's always like, you this and you that. And you know this and you know that. Like, alright, dude. Yeah, okay, sure. It's so weird. By the way, and again, no response from Beavers. No response, but here they are. By the way, you you only against the R word when Laura says it. And again, why is that a is that a question or a statement? I know Alicia's used the word multiple times, and you sat in chats and laughed about it. Like, that never fucking happened, and I'll tell you right now, b would be the first one to fucking say something. Like, yo, don't use that word. Never once has she laughed about it. That's so absurd. Like, she would never do that. Like, this person clearly does not know b at all. Clearly. If your morals depend on Laura, see, that's another word that Laura likes to use like that. 
if your morals depend on Laura. Everything's morals and, you know, she's got her certain words. She learned a couple of new words and that's how she, you know, talks. It's exactly how Laura talks. It's crazy. I mean, if they're not Laura themselves, they're doing a really fucking good, idea, you know, job of just repeating everything Laura says. If your morals depend on Laura, then you're way too invested in YouTube drama. The projection is real. Like, what does that even mean? If your morals depend on Laura? Like, what? That, that doesn't even make sense. I don't even, like, what the... See what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck does that even mean? If your moral, moral depend on moral? Like, what? I don't know. I just don't even get that. Uh, so, Beaver's writes, you're wrong. I never laughed when Alicia said that word. In fact, I said it wasn't cool, but keep trying. By the way, what do you think of Laura asking every male she fights with what his penis size is? How would you feel if men started asking her how fat her fupa is? You big hypocrite. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do, mirroring. It's very true. Um, That was funny. So they write, I don't care their words. Yeah, okay. You don't care, but you're writing these fucking long ass paragraphs like this. Yeah, you don't you don't seem to care. Uh how do you feel being manipulated into lying for someone? <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> oh, this is funny. How do you feel about being like this person's mentally ill and like very, very paranoid and disturbed? It's fucking crazy. How do you feel being manipulated into lying for someone who does what she says Laura does under the guise of not giving Laura ammo? I don't even know. Who are you talking about with that? Like, what? Who does that? Who the fuck does that? I want to know how that feels. That's fucking weird. Like, even if that was the case, why do you want to know how that feels? Like, are you going to fucking get off on it or something? Like, that's, that's fucking weird. Uh, anyway, friends don't do that for each other or to each other. Oh, because you're the friend professional here, right? You know everything about friendship, clearly. <laughs> uh, all right. Causes way more damage than asking a troll their penis size. Well, mm, I don't know if you could really say that because, like, what if a guy really does have a small dick and can't get laid and, you know, Laura's there? Or what if they're... All right, all right. How's this? What if their dick was, like diseased or something happened or they had cancer in their testicles or something happened to their private area, okay, at some point in their lives and they had to get it cut off because, you know, a thing that's hanging from your body, not to be gross, things could happen to it, okay, during life. Things could happen. It could get caught in things. It could, it, it could get hurt, okay? And Laura's asking these people their penis sizes, don't you think that's perverted and a little too personal? So what if somebody who had that happen to them has a small penis because something bad happened to them and they got to explain themselves to Laura? I'm sorry, but if a man went around asking women, how big are your tits? Okay, like, like fucking Howard Stern used to do back in the day and everybody had made a big fucking deal about it. You know, they'd be up in arms. They'd be like, how dare you ask a woman how big her tits are? So why is Laura allowed to go around asking men how big her, their penises are? Is that not sexually harassing? Because to me, that is. To ask a, a man how big his penis is, I, that, that, that is a question I've never in my life asked a man and never would ask a man. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, that's so invasive and intrusive and personal, and it's sexual harassment. If Laura was a man, she would be called a sexual harasser. Because that is so fucking inappropriate to ask people about their fucking genitalia and the size of it, dude. Disgusting. Fucking disgusting. And she does it all the time. And then she spent, like, the other day sitting up on her live talking about the Glarus penis. Because she's obsessed with penises. But I guess when you don't have one, that's what you do. Anyway. Or when you haven't had one in how many years? And you gotta drive eight hours for it? Anyway. You legit... You legit thought just to be infuriated and talk about it in a Discord and then on a six-hour lives. What? Wait, what? You legit watched, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Watch, though, just to be infuriated and talk about it in a Discord and then on a six-hour lives. <laughs> like, how do you know what we talk about? Who is talking about any of that for six hours? It's unfortunate. You're more worried about what Laura says than your own life. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's, you got, you got beef rings there, that's so true, I mean, oh my god, you know, she doesn't work a nine-to-five job or anything, uh, that is the truth, because they said, this asshole said so, so it's the truth, you should start asking yourself a lot more questions, now, who says that all the time, Laura, she's always on her lives, you should ask yourself this, don't these people ever ask themselves this, 
you know that that's such a Laura statement right there. So like I said, like this person's doing a phenomenal job of sounding like Laura. They really are. They really are. Do you really think someone? Do you really think I would care? So now again, look, no reply from B Fergs. None. Zero. But they're back. <laughs> they're back with another fucking paragraph. It looks a lot longer on the phone. When you when you pull this up on your phone, the paragraph, like you have to like scroll twice to like read the whole fucking thing. Why uh all right, do you really think I would care if someone asked Laura's Fupa size? This person clearly doesn't get what a fucking joke is. <laughs> like who asks that? Like, oh my god, no sense of humor, just like Laura. Why are you thinking about that? Were you the troll she asked? That's the dumbest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> really? No, I wouldn't spend a single second worried about it. But here you are defending Laura for, like, hours, bro. Like, this one says, hold on, your first comment was two days ago, okay? And your last comment is from 18 hours ago, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. There's more under this. I'm sorry. Uh, six hours ago. So you spent two days worrying about this shit, defending Laura. Yeah, but you wouldn't spend your time on that, right? Okay. Uh, fuck, now I lost my spot. Hold on. Oh, it was before I came in. Okay. Uh, why are you thinking about that? All right, blah, 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 blah. No, I wouldn't spend a single second being worried about it. I'm not fighting Laura's barrel. I'm not fighting Laura Laura's battles like you are. Laura's good all, all on her own. Bro, what are you doing in this comment section then? <laughs> what exactly are you doing here then? You bring Laura up every time and fight her battles and defend her, dude. But you're going to gaslight people and tell them that that's not what you're doing? Mm, okay. Anyway, I'm not fighting Laura's battles, battles like you are. Laura's good all on her own. You sit and defend somebody who creates her own issues and inserts herself in everything, then whines about other people doing it for attention. Uh, I assume they're talking about me, and I'm like, what the fuck have I inserted myself in? Laura goes up on other people's panels, okay, and 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 inserts herself in other people's drama. I don't do that. When's the last time you saw me on somebody else's panel getting involved in their bullshit? I don't do that. I'm calling out what nobody cares enough to call about to call out, right? Because you're making shit up, dude. That's what you're doing. You're you're just clearly just blatantly making bullshit stories up and then calling them out as if they're reality and they're not. <laughs> so it's like, what the fuck, dude? Oh, I'm sure she has, Muffin Mouse. I I'm sure of it. This shit's weird, man. Uh, somebody should care about you. <laughs> like, they really think they're going to get into Beeferg's head. Uh, I wrote, what the fuck is this? It now, remember what I wrote here. Pay attention. What the fuck is this idiot rambling about now? They seriously sound unhinged or like they smoked copious amounts of crack. The paranoia is real. And then I wrote... And that was to be for because I wasn't even talking to them. And I said, uh, is Laura sleeping with this person or something? Holy shit. She's talking about you spending five years trying to prove you're better than someone you'll never meet. As she spends every day waiting to find places to comment so she can defend someone she'll never meet. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I think I hear niece lone wolf howling for you. Go back over there. Oh, maybe that's why they said that I told them to fucking, uh, what to do. <laughs> Again, can't take a joke. Oh, shit. It was a joke because I know, I, I know that the, the person Fresh Start was harassing this niece lone wolf person, which Corey also has ties to. Uh, and, and I said, go back over there. And they're like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, dude. All right. You don't own this comment section. No, I, I know I don't, but but I can tell you to go fuck yourself. Uh, I knew you'd probably be here. So predictable. You're a psychopath, and I'm so confident in that. I will continue proving it with your own actions, which you haven't done. You tried making two channels. They got taken down, okay? Nobody took them seriously except Laura and Corey. Go figure. Uh, so, yeah, you haven't really done much of anything. You can't even maintain a channel. Um, look at Alicia. All right, we read this one already. I'm just going to skip it. Who needs to hear it twice? And then they replied to me again without me ever replying to them. If I make 100 comments under every... I didn't even see this one. 
or maybe I did because I came back. I don't know. I don't even think I read it. I might have just replied to B first. If I make a hundred comments under every video like you do that agreed with you, I wouldn't be stalking or obsessed. But who said that they were stalking or obsessed? Like guilty conscience? You you sound to have a guilty conscience. I didn't say you were stalking or obsessed. Uh, that's what black and white thinking is. No, dude, that's not what it is. You you don't know what black and white thinking is, so you should probably go read about that because that's wrong. You're wrong. That's ignorance and warped and unhinged. <laughs> and warped and unhinged? <laughs> it's like, okay. You are your own definition of what a psychopath is. I don't have a... Dude, like, I don't have a definition of psychopath. Like, I don't make my own definitions up. There's there's definitions online of what a psychopath is, like, in the dictionary. I, I would go by those, but I don't make definitions up. Like, Laura. Laura tries to make definitions up for words that we all know what they mean. That, that would be her. I don't do that. Um... And you use people to distract your subs, friends, from seeing the psychopath that you are. Ooh, you, guys, they're on to me. They're on to me. I've been using people to distract everybody from seeing what a psychopath I am. Like, what? It's so stupid, dude. <laughs> I don't even know what that fucking means. Yep. Well, uh, sorry. B Frank says, yep, they don't care about Laura's fupa size, but they leave two long ass comments talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Beefergs, I just listened to the live I guess you're referring to. I amazing. I'm I amazing. This is all you got out of that? It figures. It makes sense and adds up to the person I know you really are. Laughing my ass off, I made one comment. Oh my god, this person needs to fucking punctuate. I made one comment. Learn how to count. I was answering your question. Your comments are novels and add up to a full-time job. That guy belongs in your clan of crazies. I hope he subbed up. You're legit crazy. Yeah, okay. So this fucking person comes around. This is so weird. This vape queen person who is the same person that came in my chat one day and like, well, a few times and they were like, oh, b Ferg's is missing, you know, your guy's friendship. And I'm like, oh my God, that has to be the same person as Fresh Start, Burgundy Blues, and however many other fucking 9,000 names that they had. Oh, thank you for playing with them one fan. Sit down. Ugh. <laughs> That's great. Right? So this person came in my comments and they're like, oh, you know, Beefrigs left Makeup Mobster. Like, they were so concerned about Beefrigs. And I'm not saying anything about Beefrigs, but like, who's paying attention to Beefrigs besides this asshole? Like, you know, like, whether she's in my chat or not, like, nobody else is caring that Beefrigs, whether she's in my chat or not. Like, this is so weird. Nobody really cares. But this is where it gets weird. They write back at Burgundy Blues. What's your damn problem, Fresh Start? Only only one leaving novels is you, stupid troll. And I'm like, what? Is this fucking person now fighting with themselves under their other troll account? What's going on here? <laughs> this is fucking weird, dude. This is fucking weird. Oh, wait. This was Laura's... They got blocked by... What? Vape Queen got blocked by La by Laura? I don't, who cares if people write novels? Like, who gives this shit? This person's only... Look at the length of this person's comments. And they're, they're, that's the longest comment, I think, in this whole comment section. Right? Where do you see Beefergs writing a, a, a fucking novel? The only person writing novels is this person. Every comment of theirs is longer than any of ours. <laughs> they're gonna gaslight us and tell us we're the ones writing novels. Oh, okay. Um, so weird. This is weird. So I write back to them, laughing my ass of, wow, where should we send your award? You know you can make money with those psychic abilities of yours? Can you read tarot cards? Like Laura says, tarot. Could you read tarot cards too? Of course I came here when my friend told me your lame ass was in her comments talking crazy. You are pure entertainment for us. Then I wrote back to Beefrigs. Their comments aren't even worth reading at this point. They sound like a broken, like a broken record of Laura talking. Shit's getting weird in here. Now they're talking to themselves. Uh, then they write back. I didn't even see this. Ah, uh, you admit you have your own little Capone like you unintentionally admit to everything. Like, okay, dude. I don't know what I'm admitting to, but sure. You really suck at this. Really suck laughing my ass off like you suck at... <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, hold on. Oh my god, this is so funny. You really suck at this. <laughs> this is all one sentence. This is so fucking weird, dude. Vape Queen got blocked, but I can't remember why. Because I think this person is a fucking major troll, and they don't really like Laura. They just fucking troll everybody. 
They try to be friends with you sometimes. They try to not be friends with you. Yeah, now you're my Capone. Because, you know, you go into everybody's uh, live streams and start fighting for me. You know, you're known for that. Yeah. Okay. You go into Laura's chat and start, you know, fighting with her and saying things about her. Yeah. For, for me. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Same thing. Same shit, right? This, mind you, this person came into B Ferg's comments. N not the other way around. Like, Beavers isn't bothering, isn't bothering this person, not chasing them around. This person, though, every time Beavers is somewhere, this person shows up. It's weird. Or anytime, even when I'm not being, like, I'm not the topic, they're in a comment section making me the topic. It's fucking weird. Uh, anyway. Aw, uh, you admit, you, wait, wait, let me go back to the sentence. You really suck at this, really suck, like you suck at trying to emulate being a good mother who had anything to do with raising her son. The disconnected and loud, is loud and clear. Yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> I'm emulating being a good mother. You're see-through. Uh, okay, I don't care what you think. You do realize that, right? If you're here responding, then I'm not talking. You know, I think this person either doesn't have children or doesn't have uh, custody of their child. <laughs> either or, because they're fucking crazy. And they're very bothered by people that, you know, love their kids, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they need a hug from their mommy. Uh, if you're here responding, then I'm not here talking to myself. Uh, dude. Okay. Like, how did this person find... Mind you, there's no other comments on this video, on this on this uh, chat, or whatever, post. So, like, this person and this person just happened to find this post. Because it didn't even show up in my feed when Beeferg shared this. And, like, I comment on her community post. And I think because she hasn't comment, like, she hasn't posted in a while, I've noticed this with other people, too. If YouTube, like, if you don't comment or if you don't post, they'll stop, like, suggesting in your in your feed... And then other things will take over in your feed. Newer things that you've subscribed to. It's The algorithm is very fucked up lately. I've noticed. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this. But it's like you watch one video of somebody's. And then the next five times you log into YouTube. Their videos are on the top of your feed. Has, that, has this happened to anybody else? All right. I respond back. Hey, wait. But Alicia, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to hold on a second. Uh, you're supposed to be better off, uh, mentally without my toxic, out of control anger, jealousy, and greed spewing, that's another Laura word, in, in your ear, <laughs> forcing you to see things in the evil way I do. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what I do. All right. If you're here, like, I don't have force in anybody. I, how many times have you guys heard me say, like, if you don't like what I'm saying, Bye. I don't know. You know, like, I leave. I, You know, it sucks. But, you know, I, I'm not going to cry when, you know, if you don't like what I'm saying, you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying. I don't, you know, it is what it is. Um, Not everybody's going to agree with me. You're seeing, all right, you're see-through. If you're here responding, then I'm not here talking to myself. Uh, I meant you're this troll account, but you're too dumb to figure that one out. You say all the same lame thing, so you're projecting again. It's all you know. I'm glad you give your subs something to be entertained by. You're insufferable. I'm insufferable, but you watch every fucking thing I do. Okay. You complain. I don't have a vocabulary, but now I'm using too many words. When did I say that? Did I say that? Hold on. I don't remember saying that. They, oh, I just said they sound like a broken record. That means you're repeating yourself, dude. And you're trying to use the same thing back to me. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Uh, and you sound just like Laura, but I never said you're using too many words. You complain. All right, blah, blah, blah. You're a psychopath. You can't stick to anything. Only feel, you only feel empower, empowered around the weakest people. Okay, dude. Thanks. Yeah, you, you're so right, man. You got me. <laughs> this person's psychotic, dude. <sighs> I feel a little crazy for reading that. Oh my God. That's funny. You could still say too many words that have a bad vocabulary. That's actually very true, right? You know, like, how am I forcing people to be on the internet? I really want to know that. I that, that one's fucking funny. I'm forcing people. You guys, everybody, you must stay here. If you don't, I'll kill you all. Like, how do I force somebody that lives in another fucking country or state or whatever to do anything? I can't get the vision of TM singing lullabies to pity keys. 
Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. They just repeat themselves, like, at this point, like, oh, you're a psychopath, you're this, you're that, oh, I don't know who this person is, so all I can do is comment back to them about the stupid shit that they write, so of course I say the same things, because you say the same things all the time, and I had, you know, like, what your English is bad, that's just a fact, I mean, so yeah, I do, because I, I don't know personally who you are, so I really can't say anything, because you're not here to share things about your own life. You rather attack people who do share things about their lives, and then try to twist them and use them against people, and say that they're, you know, uh, whatever the fuck you say, who gives a shit, honestly, you're a fucking stupid troll, pussy, pussy ass bitch. Come and take a fucking link, you little fuck. Here. Here you go, you little dick. Bam. Come take a link and tell me. It's just weird because this person's always up in Laura's comment section. Suspiciously ready? Watch. I'm going to show you. But they're never in Laura's chats. Or at least, I shouldn't say, I don't watch every single one of Laura's lives. So I, and I, when I do, when I do listen to her, I really don't watch the chat because I'm usually like busy and doing something else. But, uh, here. They will be, I saw them in a few of her comments sections, though. I, I mean, I, when I have streamed her on here, though, and I am watching her chat because I'm, it's right in front of my face while I'm talking to you guys, I've seen their comment. I've never seen them in the chat. So, like, that's weird. Why don't you ever go on Lauren's live streams now? Could it just be a coinky dink? Sure. Why does Laura need a mascot for her channel? Is she trying to be like Queen Bee? Because she ripped on Queen Bee so bad. I'm a stalker. Um, what do you call it? We she ripped on Queen Bee so bad about the queen and the beehive thing, and now it's like, oh, I need a mascot, like a Lisa Frank Dragon mascot. Okay, because I'm 53 and that makes sense. I don't know what the dragon thing. I still don't get this dragon thing. Uh so okay, I saw them under this one. Here they are, under Laura's comments. Uh this one is a real joke. And now I don't put it by Laura to be, you know writing under her own comment section under a troll account but just saying this one is a real joke like everyone else over there she she was called a psycho until she agreed with them and that's how small minds with no talent and nothing of value work <laughs> everyone's a psycho until they agree with their agenda meanwhile laura calls everybody a psycho tiffany was a psycho remember when laura was calling tiffany a psycho tiffany's back in laura's chat they're friends again, right? Molly Golightly was a psycho and a narcissist. Laura's friends with her again. So, uh, who are you talking to, dude? I mean, are you just that fucking unaware of your surroundings or unobservant? I don't, I don't understand. Laura, Laura is the one who does this. She calls everybody a psycho until they agree. You know, uh, fucking, uh, the glare is a narcissist. Okay, and then the one time the glare said he agreed with Laura, all of a sudden the glare is cool. You know? That's Laura, dude. She's the one that does that. Anyway, I think Laura was the one that was calling Jules a psychopath anyway, so. If I was Jules, I'd be embarrassed knowing what they all said about me. And now I'm only welcome because of who I hate. Bro, my chat has... It's fucking YouTube. And my chat has always been open to everybody and anybody in, in this. I don't care if you were friends with Laura, friends with this person... Everybody's always been welcome in my chats. That's always it's always been an open chat. So it's it's so stupid. She could have came in here and told me to go fuck myself, like many people do. And I it doesn't matter. It's not the only reason she's welcome in here. Uh, if that's not a slap in the face, I don't know what is. So humiliating. You know, I'm sure Jules is gonna get a complex now because this asshole said so. But they were under they're under other Laura's lives. I see them only in the comment section. Under her lives. Oh, fuck me. Oh, shit. Did I? Oh, I wasn't sharing that. Sorry. I thought I was sharing it. Um, Not that you need to see, but this person's just an idiot. But yeah, they're under Lords. Here they are again. Wimpy Wimpster. Oh, they're, they'll go into anybody's chat. Who fucking posted a video of a clip of me the other day? And they showed up in this person's chat. It was, uh, was it? Fuck. Was it No Wire Hangers? I don't know. They, they're, but they're never in Laura's live streams. It's just weird. They'll come in my live streams every once in a while, but they'll never go in Laura's. Mm-hmm. Patty, yes. She was talking about the Glare's penis. She's like, he's, a, he's pretty well endowed. I'm like, all right, Laura, you sound a little too excited about this. Like, she kept repeating it. 
And I'm like, girl, I guess Laura got the picture. Because do you remember back when that all happened, she didn't see the picture, and then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, she knows? So she must have got the picture. She was pr practically begging for it. Dragon Breath Crew? Bro, like, that is so stupid. The fucking dragon. I don't... I just don't understand. I wonder how Tiffany feels about that. Because that word is a fucking trigger and a half for Tiffany. Now, she's... She's, uh... She's... Did <laughs> she go shopping? She, uh... She's not live, I don't think, anymore. She ended it. She made $300. She's like, alright, I'm done. Uh, you know? Talk to you guys later. I got candles to make. <laughs> Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, this troll, though, is entertaining. I just think it's so funny, like, the shit that they come up with, like, about me and then even Beefergs. The shit that they're saying about Beefergs, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how do you know how Beefergs thinks? Like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, the, the best one was that I give Beefergs a silent treatment. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> okay, dude. It's so fucking stupid. And then, uh, and then with, with Alicia, you know, she's better off. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Me and Alicia talk all the time. It's fucking weird that you're saying that. Why are you so concerned with every single person I'm friends with? Yeah, Laura is a cornball. Guess it's a big, it's all big compared to Fluffer. Wait, what? <laughs> I got a new faucet the other day and I absolutely love it. Well, that's awesome. I need a new faucet in my kitchen sink. When we redid my kitchen... Um, my mom gave me this, like, really expensive faucet because she worked at a, um, what do you call those places? Like, a plumbing supply place. And they were getting, they were redoing their showroom at the time, and they were getting rid of, like, some of the samples that they were sent. And my mom gave me, it's Frankie, I think. I don't know. I, like, I'm not... I know I'm not really, like, knowledgeable of, like, my mom was pretty good with that stuff. Like, she knew, like, furniture that was, like, better quality. Like, I'm not really, I don't know, I don't, I'm not really knowledgeable about that kind of stuff. So, like, I wouldn't know the difference between a Delta faucet and a Frankie, I think it's called. Hold on, let me see. Are they expensive? I don't know. She told me it was expensive. Might not have been that expensive. Oh, no, they're pretty expensive. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I don't know exactly which one mine is, but holy shit. Some of these fucking faucets. Look at this shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Ah, oh, fuck. I just zoomed in by accident. I don't know how much mine was. I'm just saying, like, I... She's like... My mom was always, like, one of those people. She's like, it's quality. Take it. Like, even if you don't like it. And I wasn't. I didn't really love the faucet. But, you know, me and my husband were like, all right, we spent a lot of money redoing the kitchen. Like, a free faucet's kind of nice. Because even, like, the cheaper ones are a couple hundred dollars, you know? So we took the faucet, um, but look at this shit. Some of these are freaking, uh, like, $6,000. That's a really cool faucet. How the fuck do you turn that on, though? I guess you twist it, maybe? I need one like this, right here. I need one like this. This isn't the same brand. This is $199. Oh, I didn't know it was, like, this kind of expensive. All right, she was right. I guess, yeah, well, why wouldn't she be right? She's in, uh, she worked in the industry. Oh, this is my faucet right here. That's pretty expensive. I don't think we would have uh, spent that much money. I mean, oh, no, this isn't it, though. Mine doesn't... Does it? I don't know. I think mine turns like that. I don't know what this little square thing is. This might be the more updated version of it. Well, anyway, I took the faucet, but I don't know. I don't I don't think it's the right type of faucet for my sink because I ha my sink's huge in my kitchen. It's 36 inches wide. It's a farm sink. So, um... <clears throat> So anyway, it's a big farm sink and and it it's like almost like too short. Like I feel like I need for the type of sink that I have, I need one that extends out a little bit more. Like, I don't know, maybe like this one. Or I would like one of these. These like industrial, you know, ones or whatever you call them. I don't know what the name is, but I like these, you know, and you just click it back into there. I feel like that would just probably work better. I don't know. I don't know if faucets like the the length of them from the pipe to the spout if they're, like, standard or if there's longer ones or shorter ones. I don't know. I have no idea. I did go into this really cool kitchen place the other day um, that they opened up. And this place is fucking awesome. It, it, it I love looking at kitchens. Like, I, I love it. I could look at new kitchens all day. I think it's, like, just so fun. Like, just looking at the different displays. This place was, like, endless. It had, like, a million different kitchen 
places. I just, me and my son went in there because I was like, he's like, mom, can we go in there? He's so weird. He's just like me though. He's like, he's like, I just want to like, you know, he's a kid. He wanted to see. It was so funny. They have these little, I think they use them to design the kitchens, but they look like PlayStation controllers. So he thought they were like PlayStations. Oh my God. I'm like, don't touch that. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Um, the, the faucet's not right, but the place was fucking awesome, dude. They had, I mean, these were like custom, custom kitchens. So like, but not, not like custom, like wood. It was all different materials and like glass cabinets and, uh, like almost like a, a Formica kind of thing. I don't know. Not Formica, not like the ones that we had back in like the eighties and nineties. It was a little different, but like, nevertheless, pretty cool looking. Some of them were just like too modern looking for me like I feel like if you're you know broke ass bitch like me <clears throat> your best bet is to just make your kitchen look as classic as possible if you have money to redo it because you put an ultra modern kitchen in it's going to get outdated looking in about you know 15 years or so and then you know somebody like me I'm not I'm not gonna have money to redo my kitchen in 15 years you know like I doubt it this kitchen's probably going to be the kitchen that stays here until I die or you know <clears throat> If somebody buys our house. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, it was pretty cool, though. The place. I, I enjoy it. But, yeah, I didn't want... You know, like, I, while I like some of the modern stuff, I, I just feel safer with doing a classic look where, you know, it won't go so far out of style. Yeah, the sprayer ones are awesome. But I just, like, I don't know, man. I would love to be, like, a kitchen designer or something because I love... I, I, I'm just fascinated about, like... <laughs> How people put that shit together. So good. Mm. No, dude, there's no getting off topic here. We're fine. I'm done fucking talking about this stupid asshole troll. They could fuck all the way off ten times till Friday. I really don't fucking care. I really don't fucking care. I think it's really funny, though. We just got a fridge. Uh, Hold on. And stove next day, our microwave died. Oh, no. That's the worst. That is the worst. That is the worst. I also have a farm sink. We retired our dishwasher. My son made one of the racks into a drying rack for the sink. Did you ever decide if you want to use the green paint? Me? No, I haven't. I really do want to paint my kitchen, though. I, I, I'm so... This is why I don't have tattoos, dude, because I'm so indecisive with things. I will buy something and I will love the shit out of it. And then, and then like, I'll, I'll be like, why did I do this? Like, why did I do this? You know, actually though, I'm pretty shocked. I haven't gotten sick of my office yet. Like, I still love it. I still come in here and I'm like, oh, I love the color. It's, uh, it's called actually the color in here is, I think it's either Benjamin Moore or Sharon Williams. And it's called, uh, grage, true grage, I think. And it's like, it's a perfect fucking grayish it's a beige it's a gray and a beige mixed together and it's 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 just perfect i think actually that's the name is it perfect grayish hold on i'll look it up perfect grayish paint let's see something like that and actually my bathroom i thought i was gonna get sick of that that's like a taupe color also by um uh one of those companies and uh and, and I got to be honest with you, I, I thought I would get a little sick of it because it's a little bit on the pinky. Uh, it's a Sherwin-Williams. Perfect grayish right here. Hold on. That's pretty accurate. I mean, mm, in person, it's not as light looking. Well, I don't know. I don't have the lights on in here right now, so I guess it might look better. But it really is just like the most pretty grayish color it's it's actually just perfect I love it it's not too light it's not too dark it's not too gray it's not too beige <laughs> like it is just the perfect grayish and that's that that color was really in you know a while back so I love it um and then my kitchen my all right so then now that I know it's Sherwin Williams I bet you my bathroom is Sherwin Williams taupe too hold on Sherwin Williams Hope. And maybe I'm just better off with doing colors like like these neutrals. Let's see. Taupe. Ooh, this looks very similar. Poised taupe. Ooh, I don't know. I don't remember that name. I feel like if I saw the name, I would remember it. Hold on. Let's see what other taupes they have. 
Tony Taupe. Mm, I don't remember that. Mm -mm -mm. Taupe tone. Neutral paint colors. So that's like my bathroom. It's very close to this. If it's not this, then it's it's close. So it's like more on like the purpley kind of side. And I was afraid when I first did it because it's like pink and I hate pink walls. No offense if you have them. I just like it's not for me. Um, and uh, it's very, very close to this. In fact, it might be this and I just don't remember the name because that would make sense. It might have been the color of the year in 2017. That would make perfect sense because I did my bathroom like right around then I painted it. Um, modern gray. I remember that color. That was in the running for something. <clears throat> Taupe tone. Let's see. Neutral paint colors. You know, I, I really didn't think I was going to like a neutral because I'm a color person. I like color in my house. You know, I feel like if my house was all white, I would get very depressed, but it would also get very uh, dirty looking. <laughs> so, um, modern gray was in the running too. Ooh, look at this color. See, I like that. Oh my God, I like that. I like that. Is that good for a kitchen though, we think, or is it too dark? Hmm. Oh my God, I could just look at pictures like this all day. Like, I just love looking at this shit. I love looking at it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, green is really in right now, which scares me because I might. Actually, that's not a bear, uh, bad white. It kind of got a greenish vibe behind it. Amazing gray. I like this color a lot, too, because it's not really gray looking. It looks more like a beige to me, but not like that boring beige. I don't know. Um, I don't know where their taupe colors are. Color sample, paint sample. Okay. This is just all grays and it colors. Let's see. Let's see taupe. It's very, very close to the taupe I just showed you. Is it like... I feel like... It, oh, I don't remember. It could have been a Benjamin Moore color, though. And to be honest with you, could you stop asking me for my location? Thank you. That's so weird. Why, where's all the taupe colors? Ooh, I like this color. I like this color. Let me see the room in that color. Oh my God. See, this is what happens. You get so overwhelmed. I don't think that would look good in my kitchen because my kitchen is gray. And I don't know if like two different neutrals, you know what I'm saying? will look good together. This fucking thing. Stop asking me to fucking for my location. Holy shit. Um, I also really am liking this look of like navy blue with like, well, that's black. Sorry. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It's like I've been seeing a lot of this like dark navy kind of blue color with like gold accents. And I really like the combination. I can't believe the taupe doesn't come up. It's so weird. What can we help you find? You could help me fucking find taupe, bitch. I mean, taupe's probably not like an in color right now. But I don't care. I like it. Yeah, look at this. It sends me to neutrals. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have a Sherwin Williams store. Quite a few of them actually around here. So, um, popular cool neutrals. I would say it's cool. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. So, I don't know. I gotta figure it out. I might have to go to a thing. Hell Navy by Ben Moore. Uh, Polo Navy Nightclub by Bear is nice. Bear has a great color selection, and I like their paint. A lot of people put it down, but I asked my uncle, he's a painter, he paints for a living, um, houses and everything, and he, he always said, he likes Glidden paint, which I think is garbage, to be quite honest with you, um, but he, he always said Bear was a good paint. It's a good paint. I, I personally do think that, I don't know, I never believed the whole, like, oh, you know, you pay for, like, high-end paint, like Sherwin-Williams or uh, Benjamin Moore. It's, like, that much better. I will say the rooms that I used, because most of my house is bare paint. Um, this room and my bathroom are the only ones that are either Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore. I'm not sure which one my bathroom is. But um, the paint held up really nice. It could also be because the... Well, no, the bathroom's used a lot. Like, this room's not used that much at all, so. Um, but the bathroom, 
it's used a lot and I feel like the paint held up nice as to where the bare paint in my kitchen didn't hold up the best. So I think, oh, I'm sorry. I think my living room is also Sherwin Williams paint and that one's all right. <clears throat> it does get marks on it though, like where I can't get the marks off even with the uh, Mr. Clean magic eraser. I call it the Mr. Clean sponge. Oh my God, the funniest thing. Did I ever tell you guys this story before? My brother lived in the same, you know, before Satan came into the picture, my brother lived in the same apartment complex as me and my husband. So he was like three buildings away from us. So like, you know, we would, it was great having him right there. Cause like, if you were like cooking and you ran out of an egg, you know, like we could call each other up like, oh, you have sugar? You know, like it was cool that he was there. So he, I was over at his apartment one time. He's like, oh, you know, I can't get these marks off the wall. And I'm like, dude, you never tried the, the magic eraser thing? I'm like, that thing's a godsend, you know? And he's like, no, I never tried it. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Because at that point in time, they had been around for like a while, you know? And I'm like, really, dude? I'm like, you never tried a Mr. Clean thing. So <clears throat> he goes and gets them, right? <laughs> the next time I'm over at his apartment... The marks are still on the wall. I'm like, yo, dude, you never got the thing I, I told you about? He's like, I did. It doesn't fucking work. I'm like, what? I'm like, th th that's impossible. It doesn't work. He fucking goes, look, I'll show you. So he goes in the kitchen, grabs the thing out from under the sink, and he goes up to the wall, and he's scrubbing the shit out of it. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, You didn't wet the sponge? And he's like, oh, you got to wet him? I'm like, Yes. What the fuck? I mean, in his defense, an eraser, he probably, you know, you don't wet an eraser, right? So we probably just thought you didn't have to wet it. I don't know, but it was the funniest thing because I was laughing so hard. So I'm like, my brother, if you know my brother, he's like one of the most intelligent people I, I know. He really is. He's very book smart. I mean, extremely book smart. Like he, he was that type of person that like never had to study for a fucking test, you know, like, and he would get a hundred on it. Like that's the type of person he was like, he knew things when we were kids. Like he would know things that I'd be like, how the fuck do you even know that? Like, you know, like he was just so intelligent when it came to like book smarts and all that shit. Well, God kind of fucking, you know, screwed him with the common sense department, I'll say. Not God, but you know what I'm saying? Like his genes. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But, you know, sometimes at the common sense department, he wasn't he wasn't so good. But with the smarts and the intelligence, uh, yeah, he was extremely smart. My brother, you know, um, I think it had he not like kind of he started hanging out with like a dirtbag kind of crew when he was uh, in high school a little bit. But I think had he stayed on like the same trajectory he was on when he was like a little kid, he definitely like could have been valedictorian or school dictorian of his, of his school. Like he was in the gifted and talented program when we were kids. He was extremely intelligent. Um, I did not get, my mom was very book smart. My dad was very extremely book smart. My dad used to sit there and watch Jeopardy and like be able to answer like the weirdest, most random questions. I'd be like, how the fuck do you know this shit? My mom was very book smart. Me, I don't know what happened. I got fucked in the book smarts department. I'm like, did, like, did the genes just run out? Like, cause I was not good in school. I did not get the best, you know, I got good grades up until a certain point and then I just stopped getting good grades. And I was like, through middle school and high school, I barely passed through school. But maybe that's when my ADHD kicked in because it was very hard for school was just extremely hard for me. I don't think it's that I wasn't smart. It was that I like, I mean, I definitely wasn't as smart as my brother, my mom and my dad. But um, I think it was that I if I didn't have an interest in a topic, I like it. I couldn't even I don't absorb it. Like, I'm still like that. You know, if I'm not interested in something, I just, like, I can't even absorb it. Like, it just won't even stick in my brain. Um, and I think that, well, that's, like, a sign of ADHD, which I didn't know until I went and got evaluated. But, uh, you know, it's it's the truth. Like, if you're just not into, like, you know, hearing about the French War or some shit. I don't even know if there was a French War. I'm just saying. You know, then then you're not going to, like, absorb it. Like, there were certain topics in, like, social studies that I found interesting, and then other topics I just didn't care about. Like, you know, like, it, it was hard for me. I struggled through school. And I, I'm not a good test taker. I suck at taking tests. Um, I get really fucking nervous and whatever. I got a little bit better when I got older, like, in college, I think, because I started to realize that a lot of the answers are in the questions. You, I, what I was good at, I'll be honest with you, was kind of bullshitting. 
writing. I like not bullshit, not lying. I'm saying like I was good at like writing and I'll never forget this. We had to read a sounds like my proudest moment, which is sad, but we had to read a uh, summer reading book when we were in school. You had to, you know, and then they would test you in the beginning of the school year. So I didn't read the fucking book. So I was like, that was another thing. Everybody in my house were book readers. My dad, my mom, uh, my brother, they all fucking loved reading books and always had like books reading. And I, I hated reading books. I, I only started reading books as an adult, which I don't do all that often, but um, I started reading more as an adult, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> I didn't read the book. So my, my friend, she had a dad that was so strict. Like her dad was on her ass for her grades and she was in all honors classes. Like, I don't know, dude, I feel like sometimes parents just put way too much pressure on their kids about grades. And it, I don't know, I don't think it's good sometimes. Um, so anyway, she was in, you know, so she was in the gifted class or whatever. But I think in English, she was in, like, regular English class. So I'm like, did you read the book? She's like, yeah. She's like, my dad made me write the practice essay. So I'm like, can I see it? <laughs> like, let me see. I didn't, dude, I didn't even get the book, let alone read it. I read her practice essay, okay, from that she wrote over the, whatever, the summer. And I memorized it. And I got the basic key points about what the book was about. I got a 95 on my fucking, on my essay. She failed. <laughs> she wrote the fucking practice essay. She failed her fucking practice essay and I fucking passed it. I'm like, how did that happen? Because I knew the formula. There's a formula to writing. You know, like there's a formula. Like once you understand the formula of the book and the questions that they ask, then it's very simple to answer the questions even if you didn't read the book. So I was, I was very good at that, you know, um, but that was about it. Other than that, I, I was horrible in every other subject. Like I really sucked at school. Social studies, I had to take twice, like 10th grade, I had to repeat it. Math, forget it. I was in the slow class in math. And then, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Science, biology, I made it by the skin of my teeth. I would skin of my teeth. I would, I would cut deals with my teachers. I would be like, all right, if I... If I go home tonight and I do every homework for the quarter, will you pass me? And they'd say yes, because they wouldn't believe that I would do all the homework in one night. And then I would go home and I would do every homework for the entire year, I mean, for a quarter, whatever. And I would hand it in the next day. I would only really do like the first five because I'm like, the teacher's not going to sit here and read fucking 20 pages of homework. So I do like the first five really good. And then like the rest of them, I kind of half-assed it a little bit. <laughs> give it back to them here you go and it would at least get me a passing grade I mean it, I had to do that in biology I, my my biology teacher cut me a deal that if I cut if I passed the regents exam and passing meant 65 uh so I could have got a 66 or 65 he would pass me for the whole you know year so I didn't have to retake biology the next year because I I did have to retake social studies twice and Math, forget it. I was just put in a slow class. Um, so anyway, yeah. So I took I took um the regents. I don't even know how, dude. I passed the regents. Because I was... Dude, I had 30s. That's the worst in biology. That was the absolute worst I've ever done in a class in, in my life. I had 30s in that class. Like, I was like 70s student, 80s. That when I say I was bad in school in most subjects, like that, I fucking just miserably failed in biology because there was a lot of things I wasn't willing to do, like cut open animals and shit. I wasn't into it. So, um, so yeah, so I somehow passed the regents. I never cheated in school. And I'll tell you why. I just saw somebody wrote, write something about a cheat sheet. One time in my life, I cheated on a test. I, I, I got caught. Now, this was my in in my ninth grade year we were we were in middle school. And like, so we were still in middle school. We called in your high. So, you know, it, it, we, we were like involved. There was more things that year than there was the prior years. Like, you know, we did a float for the homecoming parade and because we were freshmen, you know. So the teacher that ran all the ninth grade activities, he, he was my English teacher. And I love this guy. He was, everybody did. Everybody loved this guy. He was, he was so cool. He was like a real chill teacher. And he wasn't like, he knew how to get like on, on your level and, and 
be your friend, but not be, you know what I'm saying? Not like cross that boundary. I don't know. He was just like really cool. He's a really good teacher. Like he honestly, to this day, is one of my favorite teachers that I ever had. I don't even remember half my high school teachers. And and he, I will always remember. Like, I don't even remember all my, you know, I'm not, I'm sorry, not high school, my middle school. Well, high school too. I don't remember. I couldn't name every teacher I had unless I was like looking at a yearbook. But um, this guy, I, I mean, he was one of my favorite teachers. He really was. And uh, I mean, in my whole entire life. So I, there was a test and I was always good in English, but the one thing I sucked at was like, I don't know why, just vocabulary words. Like I couldn't remember definitions. I just wasn't, I, I was not good at memorizing facts, you know, ask me to write a story. I'll, I'll write a great story, but you know, to memorize facts, I'm just not a, a fact memorizer or a test taker. So we had a vocabulary test. And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to fail this. So I, I had uh, I had my rip-off uh, fucking Converse sneakers on because my mom would never buy me real Converse. She would only buy me like the freaking Kmart Converse brand. So I had them on and I wrote the answers to the, to the test on the white part of the sneaker. And like, I was so not slick about getting caught. So I would, I would like uh, fucking... I was putting my foot, you know, like up in my desk and like stretching out to try and look and see what the answers were. I hand in the test. After I hand in the test, he's like, could, could you come out in the hallway? And he's like, what's on your shoe? And I was like, oh, I just immediately like started crying. I felt so stupid. I was so embarrassed that I got caught cheating. So embarrassed. That I never fucking cheated on a test again. I swear to God. I was so... I, I felt like I let him down so much. Because he was. He was, like, so disappointed in me. And he let... I let him down. And I really, like, liked this teacher. Everybody did. He was just, like, the coolest teacher. And I was like, I, M Mr. McNeil hates me now. Like, he hates me. And for the, from that day on, I never fucking cheated on a test again, ever. My friends used to do, like, crazy shit. They would write, like... I mean, they would make, like, these contraptions and all these, like, cheating things. And I'd be like, dude, I would rather fail a test than get caught cheating again. Honestly. I was so embarrassed getting caught that I, I would rather just fail the test and just have deal with the consequences of failing a test rather than deal with getting caught cheating and then having to disappoint somebody and let them down and feel like an asshole. Because then I felt like I broke his trust and I was like, he's never going to trust me again. Like now every time I take a test in his class, he's going to think I'm cheating. And I just fucking felt horrible. <laughs> I'll never do that. I never did it again. Oh my God. Luna, me too. Art history is so fucking hard. <laughs> so hard. I, I had to take that twice in college too. Because... Art history one and two. Because I was just like, dude, like some of the things are like, it's a rock. How am I supposed to remember this rock and what fucking year it was chiseled? I don't know. <laughs> you know? Because early, early, early art is horrible, dude. It's just literally rocks and like very basic, you know, fucking pottery that's not even like, doesn't even look like pottery. It's like a bowl, like a, like a very crude <laughs> version of a bowl. It was horrible. I just could not get through it. My favorite, I think, class in college to this day was my 3D art class because it was just, the teacher was cool. He smoked cigarettes in the classroom, which is fucking crazy, but we were in a barn. We weren't in like an actual like building. So we were kind of outside in this weird barn that they turned into a classroom. And uh, and that's not why he was cool. I'm just saying he was like, he was super. If you would see the guy on the street, you would be like, that that dude is not a college professor. Like there's, there's no part of you. Because think about what you have to go through and get to, to be a college professor. You know, you got to go through a lot. And... I, right? Don't you have to have, like, your master's and whatever. So, like, this guy, he looked like a biker, dude. He really did. He looked like a crackhead biker. Like, I don't know. I don't know what he looked like. Crackhead biker. I don't even know where he came with that. But, like, honestly, if you would see the guy on the street, he had a bandana on. Like, he used to wear, like, those leather vests. And he did not look like this. Like, you would never in a million years think this guy is a freaking professor at a college, you know? But he was. But he was so cool. His class was really cool. I liked it because he... um. He was very hard on people, though. 
not me, thank God, but he was very hard on people. Like, he would fucking rip your artwork apart and, like, destroy it. Um, he was helpful, too, but he was very harsh on people. And uh, he always liked me, thank God, because I would have been, like, crying, you know. Um, but anyway, it's not that he didn't like people. It's that if your art wasn't up to his standards, he would fucking rip your ass apart. Uh, but anyway... Yeah, his class was just really fun. I mean, projects that we did were just, like, so fucking cool um, and really, like, creative. Like, you really had to dig deep to to do the projects. And, you know, I just found it really fun. I never showed you guys some of my graphic design stuff. Hold on. I'll show you guys the invitations that I designed years ago. Just so you don't think I'm shitting you guys on uh, on my skill set here. Hold on. I might have showed these a long time ago, but I think I have them saved in my... I might... I actually was thinking about them because every once in a while when I'm looking for something in my phone, I'll uh, I'll run across them <clears throat> and I'm like, I really should get back into doing this. You know, like I set out to do this. I, I bought all this stuff and I set out to do this when I was, you know, before my mom got sick and I'm like, I should really like get back into doing this. It's another, you know way to make money it's just so hard to break into some of these things especially like on on a platform like etsy it's just like there's so many fucking people on etsy uh at this point in time i made a few sales on there but it's hard to get into like the algorithm on etsy you know um like but if you're not like a top rated seller on there your shit's gonna be on like the you know last page so it's like the people like me who can't make their minds up and like go to like the 10th or 11th or 20th page you know, that that's where my shit would be um, because I'm just, I don't sell on there enough. So you have to, like, build a name. All right, hold on. I'll, let me screenshot these and I'll, I'll show you guys. I, I'm proud of them. Like, I feel like they came out very cool. I used fake names on all of them. So, I think I showed them maybe a while ago. Oh, I don't want to show that one. Hold on. This one has somebody's name on it. So I used it because it was kind of like, all right. And these were, oh, here's some stuff I made for my cousin's wedding too. Pretty cool shit. I really wanted to get into like, I, there's so many things I want to get into. Well, hello, ADHD. You know, we're known for having multiple fucking hobbies and shit. Um, it's just the way it is. Hold on. All right. All right, let me send these. Hold on. I'm very proud of my work. Oh, wait, I forgot one. I forgot one. Oh, wait. I gotta go this way. All right. I just made names up to, like, make the invitations. Because it's really... Dude, invitations are hard. Kind of hard to do. Because you have to make a layout and, like, think to yourself, like, some people might have the last name Smith. And then other people might have the last name, like, my last name, which is, like, ten letters, you know? And it's, like, you know, you got to make sure that you make it so that you could... um, What do you call it? So that you could... uh fit you know everything so it's kind of hard to I hate I always hated doing layouts like but once I started doing it I you know it, it was all right I kind of figured this out right, hold on these are just my ambitions I have other shit obviously but this was just I don't know I always come across them and I'm like I really should do this and like they're, they're cute you know I just thought that the style of invitations is always changing. Uh, so, just like graphic design, I guess everything. Hold on a second. Open. Or I should have put show in the finder, but it's going to take. All right, so hold on. Let me present this. Like, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Here. So, I didn't want to do wedding invitations because that's like a whole other animal. So these are these were for like bridal showers and stuff. Bridal shower. Uh, I thought it was cute with all the little bras, a little risque, but you know what I'm saying? That's what happens at bridal showers. People are buying lingerie and shit, you know. 
So that's what I was mostly starting off with was like bridal and engagement and I think, yeah, like engagement parties. So that one, a friend of mine actually like that I worked with told me, you know, she's like, you should do the invitations and sell them. So I had this, um, and I drew all these things. Like I drew the bras, like I drew, well, the lips I might've gotten from like a graphic because I wasn't sitting there tracing lips, but, um, this one. This one might be a little out of style at the time. It was like 2015. These uh like vintage fonts were were kind of really like the rage they were all in. You know, that was the style. Uh this one I like. I drew the dress on the thing. I don't know. I thought it was cute with the little uh abstract looking dress. April Thompson. <laughs> like what? I just made names up. Uh all right. This this was the first one I did actually. That was the first one I designed. It was just engaged, no real theme, just bright and colorful and kind of fun looking. I don't know, I like it. This one's like so out of my comfort zone right here to do. Like something so uh like what what's the word? Symmetrical, I guess. I was like, oh my god, I don't want it like just you know, making it symmetrical, like very plain, very minimalist. Okay. Not my comfort zone, but at the time this font was like so big. I think people would still maybe enjoy this font. Um, so yeah, that one was definitely out of my comfort zone, but I, I did it. Uh, this is my favorite one. I love this one. I kind of copied it a little bit, though, I have to admit, but I made it my own, but I saw one like this, and I just loved the idea, but I did my own font and everything. It was kind of like the same idea. Not gonna lie, I'll tell you guys when it's my idea or not. This was definitely not my idea, but I just loved the look of it so much that I did it. Uh, let's see. I was, let's say, inspired by somebody else. Um, this one was all my design. This is, this, all right, so this was, um, yeah, I was talking about this yesterday. The Gatsby Weddings, that Art Deco look. This one was pretty fun to do because I had to, like, draw all these shapes and everything. And then copy and paste. But anyway, um, I did this and then it was, it ended up my, I, the reason I made this one was because my cousin ended up, she had a, a, a wedding that was this theme. So I ended up, this was a sign that I made for her wedding um, for her, you know, she had a photo booth there. So I made the sign, you know, to put outside the, mm, the photo booth. Uh, it took a lot of time. All this time with all these little things. I added all the little rhinestones on there. So when you walked by, it was very glitzy looking. Uh, hold on a second. I thought I, oh, did I not? Oh, yeah. I made a monogram for the dance floor out of vinyl. This was before I had my Cricut when I had my regular vinyl cutter. Well, I still have it. I just can't hook it up to my, my Mac. That's nothing exciting. It's just a monogram. Um, hold on a second. This was... All right. So this was a chair. I found this chair in the garbage. This white chair. And I didn't know what to do with it. Like, I had it for the longest time. I was holding on to it. Because I was really into that, like... At the time, it was like 2000, you know, 14 or 15. That, like, vintage modern weird look that was in where you take like an old chair and spray paint it a like weird bright color I had all the plans in the world of doing that you know I was like yeah I'm gonna do it and then it just sat around my house for a long time like you can see it's ripped over here it's fucking horrible it's dirty so when my aunt and I you know we were doing my cousin's bridal shower I was like my cousin is obsessed with leopard print. That's why it has leopard print on it. She's obsessed. She has leopard print tattooed on her arm. I mean, that's how obsessed she is, which I don't personally think looks good, but whatever. But anyway, of course, we were going to incorporate it in her, in her, uh, you know, her shower. So my aunt was saying like, oh, where is she going to, you know, sit and you got to make a chair or something like tradition, whatever. Uh, so I said, I got the perfect chair. And I found this fabric at Joanne's Fabric, and I was like, I'm using this for something. Like, I, I have to. So I made that, and then I made the, I don't know, you can't really see it in this picture, but this is real. it was really cute. I made this, like, tie-back thing for the back that kind of looks like the bride's, like, um, veil or whatever. So that was her chair she sat in. 
for her shower so she opened the gifts and then I don't know if I have any more today oh oh and then I made signs and there's the chair with the so I made all different signs you know for the tables and everything like that I mean I dude I spent a lot of time um this was a tablecloth I think oh where is that table I forgot I had that table I wonder if that's in my basement um so yeah oh and there's another invitation that again was out of my comfort zone because it's so plain but yeah that's it so you know when I sit here and criticize people's graphic design skills on here it's because like I know what I'm doing you know I'm not am I the best graphic designer in the world no but like I do have a eye for layout and those types of things and I I think I do a pretty fucking good job so um you know, and putting everything on this background, like, watermarking, you know what I'm saying? I kind of know what I'm doing, so. I mean, I have more shit, but obviously, uh, I don't want to bore you guys to death. I've done logos for people and everything else, but I kind of know what I'm doing, so. Uh, when it comes to graphic design, so, yeah. That's why I feel like I'm in a position where I could kind of talk shit. But yeah, I really, like, I got, I was, like, I had so much fun doing all this stuff. I have more stuff from her bridal party. I don't know where the, maybe they didn't transfer over I mean I made tons of signs like for all the tables and everything and I spent a lot of time you know and uh money too because you know shit isn't free and um I had a lot of fun so much fun doing it that I was like I want to do a party business you know which is I don't know I think I started doing the invitations a little bit before her wedding but then um I don't know, you know, then my mom got sick, so it kind of, like, blew any plans that I had, which I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, like, once my mom got sick, like, I, everything I wanted to do, I just threw it to the wayside because I needed to take care of her, and I was, I like, there's no way I would have been able to sit here and focus on this shit knowing that my mom was sick and needed me, like, I just wouldn't have been able to, so, um, oh, I had more shit, why didn't that transfer over for the bridesmaids? I spelled it wrong, my mom pointed that out to me, not spelled it wrong. She's like, um, you put, what did she say? I remember I made it and she's like, uh, there's, there's supposed to be a, an apostrophe. And I'm like, are you fucking, no, there's not supposed to be it. whatever it was. And I had to remake the sign. But yeah, I spent a lot of time and a lot of money making these things. And it was really fun. Like, I was like, this is fucking great. But then besides my mom getting sick, just like, I, again, pricing graphic design stuff I I wouldn't even know where to start like I don't know I don't know but I love signage and making signs like that's like I I love it but I really every time I go to Michael's I see that fucking laser cutter and I'm like I want that thing so bad it's like a thousand dollars that was more than a thousand dollars because I fucking love it I would make signs all day every day um but yeah I can't really afford that right now Hold on. I want that and I want a, a 3D printer and then I'll be happy. 3D printers, crazy enough, the 3D printers have come so much down in, in price that they're actually like cheaper than a laser engraver. You could get a cheesy laser engraver on like Amazon that like it's so small. It's a little desktop one for like cheap, but I want like a real deal one where I could cut like through wood and shit. So anyway. We started remodeling three years in the bathroom with stand-up glass shower in the bathroom. And then I need a seat. I need to... I sit down in the shower. Everybody thinks I'm, like, so weird for that. But I hate standing up in the shower. <laughs> I don't know. I just like sitting and relaxing on the floor. Anyway, all right. I got to end this. I got to go... Uh, I'm going to try to... I have to get these two orders out because I feel so bad about Huck's order. I'm going to have uh, the person ship it back to me and then I'm going to ship it to Huck. So I, I need to get these out. But it was, as per usual, it was lovely talking to you guys today. Uh, again, my prayers go out to Jonice's family and her friends and anybody on here who was close with her. Uh, but more so to, you know, her family and the people that actually experienced her you know, and lived with her and loved her. Uh, she's just so terrible. Cancer sucks. It's fucking horrible. Um, she's just way too young to be gone. And it's so sad to know that 
that she's gone. Um, so my prayers, you know, go out to her and my condolences to her, her family. And uh, please, again, if you're going to give money, thinking that it's going to go to her, you know, please go. Honestly, there's other people in this community that are friends with her that I feel would not take your money. And like, I, I'll even point to like, I think Tracy was friends with her. And I don't think Tracy would be the type of person to put money in her pocket. Okay. So, you know, if you want to find out, I would, I would definitely steer you more. You know, you guys know, I don't like Tracy and I don't care for her, but I, I think she's a woman with integrity who wouldn't take money and, you know, she would probably steer you in the right direction. So, um, the truth has something for her. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to go to anybody on YouTube and you want to help out in some way, please don't do it through Laura. Just, just, there was other people here who cared about her that I think have a little more integrity and, um, you know, that will ensure that, that the money will get there. She had a group of friends and I think that, you know, even fucking Corey, as much as I hate that asshole, I don't think she would steal money from people. So, um, oh, Kiki has a link. There you go. Th those are people that I trust that would not, you know, that aren't here to exploit her. And I, you know, as much as I don't like, I, not that I have anything against Kiki, but I'm just saying as much as I don't care for Tracy as a person and the way she talks to people and her opinions and stuff, like I, I don't think Tracy would ever take money from people in a situation like this. Uh, you know, so I feel like, you know, Kiki or any of those people, like, please don't, do not funnel money through Laura. Like, I mean, do what you want at the end of the day. It's your money. But I'm just saying, like, if you really want to ensure that your money is going to go to where it's going, I would, I would definitely say to, you know, look in other areas, uh, for people that were friends with her. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, there's two children right now without a mother and there's a husband without a wife, you know, and there's a mother without a daughter. You're never supposed to, I don't know if Jonice's parents are still here in all fairness, but if they are, you know, you're not supposed to um, ever, you know, die before your parents. It's just like, it's, ugh, she's just so young. It's so sad to even think of. My goodness. Ugh, life is so unfair. But um, yeah, please be, just be smart with, with your money. I'm sick of seeing people getting ripped off and all that shit. So um, with that said, God bless, you know, her family. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.